ladies and gentlemen, Kelsey Cook. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming out. Feels so good to be back in the land of hot, outdoorsy couples. <laughs> Look at all of you. It's a treat for my eyeballs. I love it. Except I could never tell with you Denver dudes if you're actually hot or if you just have facial hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? You guys always have a hat mustache, beard, an IPA blocking your nose and mouth. I'm like, are you attractive? Are you just covering 90% of your face? What a, because we all think that cats are cute until you see a hairless cat. And then you're like, kill it with fire. No. Anytime I've seen one, I've been like, is it sick? And the owner's always like, no, we actually paid $5,000 for him, so. I'm like, for Gollum with a collar? Why? <laughs> Could have just blown my nose into Kleenex and handed it to you for free. And it looks the same. It's just runny shapes. I don't like it. I'm glad you guys came out. Uh, I know that everybody's had a really crazy past couple years. I had an especially crazy 2020. I actually got divorced a week before COVID hit. Yeah, so who's ready for some comedy? <laughs> uh, I just start crying. No, it's okay. <laughs> I think the craziest part about getting divorced is having to change your emergency contact back to your mom. <laughs> it would be less embarrassing to use a stranger from Craigslist. Truly. But uh, other than that, it went pretty smoothly. Like, we still have a lot of love and respect for each other. He's also a comedian, so we didn't have a lot of assets to split up. <laughs> it's not like there was a summer house and a boat. It was like, do you want the Batman Begins DVD? <laughs> Who gets the good spatula? And after some time had passed, we decided that we were gonna try and be friends again. And that's always a little weird, the first time you try hanging out with an ex as a friend. When he saw me, he fist bumped me. <laughs> I was like, wow, honestly, I would rather have you fist me. <laughs> that would feel less physically uncomfortable <laughs> than this nightmare you just put us through. Hated that. Absolutely not. And I've had the deadly peanut allergy for most of my life. So for the eight years we were together, he had to stop eating peanut products because if he did and then kissed me, my throat could close. So when I saw him, I was like, oh, what's it like to eat peanut butter again? He goes, oh man, we should have broken up a long time ago. <laughs> I don't even blame him. Have you had peanut butter? <laughs> I can't compete with that. I hate that the person I'm with has to give that up. That puts way too much pressure on me to be worth the trade-off, right? <laughs> like, you're gonna rob a man of Reese's for the rest of his life? Pff, bitch, you better be pretty open-minded in the bedroom. <laughs> gonna make a man stop swallowing something delicious. Well, get ready to start swallowing something gross. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta fill the void that Snickers left. <laughs> a missionary with the lights off ain't gonna cut it anymore. So, had to learn some new moves and watch some tutorials. That's what I call porn. It's just, uh, just educational for me now. I just watch with a little notepad like, oh, pretend to gag. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Seems good. I do think it's easy when you get married to stop trying as hard in bed, but God, 
if you get divorced and you start trying to date again, it's like having to come back out of retirement. <laughs> you know, it's like you gotta start stretching, get ready to run another BJ 5K. <laughs> like, no, I just did this. <laughs> Somebody moved the finish line back another 10 years. Ugh, can't even see it. Do we have any uh, married people here tonight? That was a pretty sad sound. <laughs> you guys were faking it a little bit. You're like, eh. Some of you just treated it like a silent auction. You were like... <laughs> just so sad. Anybody here been married for a really long time, like over 20 years? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are so cute. How long have you been married? 21, give it up for 21. That's a long time. Yeah, so you guys get it. If you've been working the same job for over two decades, you start to cut some corners. Right? But if it is your first week at a new blowjob, you are hustling. <laughs> you just are. I'm sure you dudes have figured out by now that the best blowjob you ever get from us is the first blowjob. <laughs> because women, we're so competitive, we know that you're about to compare us to every other one you've ever had. So we just enter the arena that night like, I will be queen. Give me that. <laughs> we pull out all our tips and tricks, hurt our knees, throw our back out. We want a trophy. We will give head to get ahead. But then you get married and you start to treat blowjobs like you're assembling Ikea furniture. And just skip a few steps and by the end you're like, next time I'm hiring somebody else to do this. Oh. Little righty tidy lefty Lucy, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> we gotta go to Costco. <laughs> I tried to avoid the whole post breakup identity crisis. One of my friends went through a breakup and she got this dramatic haircut afterward as a revenge move against her ex. She's like, if he sees me, he's gonna know he missed out on this whole other me. <laughs> like a guy has ever seen a haircut and been like, Never got a fuck asymmetrical lob, Lisa. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> you guys never know when we change our hair, right? You're not even observant of yourselves. <laughs> Before the divorce, I was cuddling with my ex and I felt like my leg had been stabbed. I looked down, his toenails looked like he cut them with his teeth. <laughs> They're all jagged. Like he could unlock a secret door in a haunted house. I was, I was like, do you have a best friend with a matching jagged toenail? You put them together and make a best friend necklace? Is that what you're, is that what you're doing? <laughs> he turned his toe into a prison shiv. And I was like, what is this? He goes, I just didn't notice. Oh, I sure did. When you shanked my Achilles tendon. And I'm bleeding out. <laughs> Cause I feel like this stuff only gets worse with you guys with age. Like we've all seen the really old men with thick tufts of raccoon hair growing out of their ears. I'm sure that guy's wife has been telling him to trim it for years and he just can't hear her. Like, what? It's like yelling into a fan. It's coming right back in your face. I just sat next to a very old man on a plane recently and I had my notebook out and he leans over and goes, it's nice to see somebody writing and not on their phone. And I was like, aw, he doesn't know I'm writing jokes about cum. <laughs> and I was like, oh, suddenly Candy Crush doesn't seem so bad, huh, Wendell? 
I'm gonna booped him. Booped him on the nose. <laughs> Love that, Wendell. It does feel a little weird to start over now in my 30s, but at least I know now what I like and don't like in a relationship. For example, I don't care how hot you are, I'm still never gonna eat your ass. <laughs> Not a fan of the devil's chocolate. <laughs> no, thank you. And I'm fair about it. I don't ask anybody to eat mine either, okay? There's no need. Women have a lot of holes down there. It's like a mini golf course. <laughs> Just skip the one that's in a lagoon. Just <laughs> don't even look at it. <laughs> I have never wanted to do that to one of you guys. Most of you dudes have real blue collar assholes. <laughs> Not a lot of maintenance going on back there. That thing works at Lowe's. I don't trust it. It's like blindly sticking your face between two couch cushions. There's just <laughs> goldfish crackers and Part of a broken Christmas ornament. It's a choking hazard, frankly. I'm not gonna swallow a paperclip so you can come a new way. And that is the joke I wrote next to Wendell on the plane. So. <laughs> now you know. And I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I didn't even hear about eating ass until later on in life. And when I did, I was like, why is that even on the menu? Because <laughs> as women, you want to seem like you're like cool and dirty and down for anything, but it's poop. <laughs> like that's not even the same universe of things that turn me on, right? Like that's like going to Disneyland and one of the rides is beekeeping. You're like, what? <laughs> That sounds terrible <laughs> and dangerous. Like, I don't understand how the people who are eating ass all the time aren't getting violently ill. I have been washing my produce for 32 years to avoid E. coli, but I'm supposed to take my mouth and go straight to the source? <laughs> Just drink from the hose? <laughs> I don't trust you dudes to wash a frying pan correctly, let alone your assholes. not dying at 32 from Brad's butthole. <laughs> Dreams and goals to accomplish. Have you guys been drinking tonight? Yeah? <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're fucking hammered, Christ. <laughs> it knocked me backward. Some of my friends uh, actually got sober during quarantine, and if I'm being honest with you, I found it unacceptable. <laughs> I was like, uh, I just got divorced, I need you to ramp it up with me. Now is not the time for you to be a better person, okay? You're actually being selfish, so. <laughs> Some of them took the AA quiz online, so I took it with them, and it turns out it makes everybody sound like they're an alcoholic. The first question is, have you ever used alcohol to alter your mood? <laughs> like, is there any other reason? Who's like, no, I'm in it for the acne and diarrhea. <laughs> I'm a purist. <laughs> the second question is, after consuming alcohol, have you ever done something you've regretted? <laughs> like, do you mean literally every time? <laughs> Who's getting drunk and doing the Lord's work? <laughs> I've never had five margaritas and been like, all right, time to donate blood. <laughs> Gotta pass this party on to someone in need. <laughs> My biggest regrets stem from alcohol. When I was in college, I used to take shots of gin and chase them with deli meat. <laughs> yeah. You know you're white trash when your cocktails involve ham. That is not great. But I feel like if you're broke in college, you form weird habits like that. Like if you don't have a dishwasher, you try and cook using as few dishes as possible. 
Okay. I want to know if you guys do this. Like, if you want banana on your cereal, but you don't want to get a knife dirty, do you ever just tear pieces off with your teeth and then... (laughs) 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 Uh, The creatures come out at night. Look at you. I didn't even know that was weird until my ex caught me doing it. And was like, are you mama birding yourself? You need to get some help. I was like, uh, I learned this while I worked at IHOP, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Time is money. I'm being efficient. Okay. Wow. I like that Disney villain laugh in the shadows. <laughs> the fuck was that? I like that on the special. That's good. Keep that weird shit up. <laughs> I, uh, I did so much dumb drunk shit in college. At one point, my friends and I went to Vegas. I got hammered, ate a bunch of food, passed out, woke up the next morning, went to the pool, and when I looked down, there was like white powdery stuff in my belly button. <laughs> I was like, oh God, did I do coke for the first time last night? And so I touched it and I tasted it and I was like, oh, Parmesan cheese. (laughs) My friends told me that apparently I ate seven slices of pizza like a wild boar. And in the process, just dumped a loose quarter cup of parm down my shirt. And then let it collect in my belly button like some sort of Pizza Hut stripper. So, (laughs) made some really good choices in my life. I do think I made an actual good choice recently. I just quit being vegan after a year and a half of doing it. I'm back, baby! back in these meat streets. Oh, man. Does it feel good to have friends again? Yeah. No one wants you around. My ex-husband and I, we went vegan together on January 1st, 2020. And then two months later, we were divorced. (laughs) Am I saying that veganism ruins marriages? Yeah, I am. I am. (laughs) But if we kept on eating nachos, we would have been too happy and too sleepy to notice our problems. (laughs) There's not a lot of divorce in the Midwest. People think it's religion. It's cheese curds. (laughs) Cheese can do what God can't. (laughs) A couple hasn't had sex in 20 years, but they eat a cheese curd and go, you know what? One more day. I'll think about divorce tomorrow, but right now, I'm gonna face fuck this cheddar. (laughs) I'm gonna get lost in this plate. (laughs) So, I just saw something online that burned my eyes. I just found out that I'm on Wikifeet. Does anybody here know what Wikifeet is? (laughs) A few of you nodding. A lot of dudes that are like, don't make eye contact with me right now. If you don't know what Wikifeed is, it's a website for people with foot fetishes. So women, if you post a photo on Instagram that shows your little tootsies, the foot folks might do a copy and paste onto Wikifeed and then zoom in on your toes and make their keyboard sticky. <laughs> I know. It's like scrapbooking for men who need Jesus. <laughs> it's a nice hobby. I know that sounds like I'm king shaman. I'm really not trying to. Honestly, I am so jealous that some people can get off from that. Like, I wish I could just stare at a dude's hairy kneecap. <laughs> and get tingles in my basement. What a life. <laughs> I would live on wiki knees. Oh, I would get nothing done. So much harder than that. So somebody told me that there's this profile of me on wiki feet. And at first when I heard that, I was like, oh, does that mean I have hot feet? Hmm, I'm so flattered. Then I went and looked. I saw that the foot fetish community has rated my feet only 2.3 out of five stars. (laughs) Which they call okay feet. 
was like, oh, apparently I have Applebee's feet. <laughs> it's like, you'll put it in your mouth, but you won't tell anybody about it. Just... <laughs> kind of a two for Tuesday deal. <laughs> and a few months before the pandemic hit, some dude slid into my DMs and just said, two grand for foot vid. Now, Denver. Make some noise if you would send a video of your feet to a stranger for $2,000. Godless animals, all of you. My ears, Jesus. Some of you just throw your areola up on Facebook for a dollar. Aunts and uncles seeing it, you don't give a shit. You're like, Venmo me my dollar, Aunt Sherry, I earned this. This is a solid nip. Well, I appreciate your honesty. I, uh, I wasn't quite as sure about it <laughs> as all of you were. I was like, I don't know this guy. He's gonna have a video of my feet for the rest of his life. It's too weird. I'm not doing it. But then COVID hit. <laughs> and I lost all my comedy work. So two days later, I wrote him back. <laughs> I got desperate so fast. I was like, all right, man. Two grand from my feet. I'm ready. Let's do it. And he never responded. <laughs> I got ghosted by the foot guy. <laughs> do you know how humiliating it feels to lower your morals and your values only to have a foot guy be like, nah, I'm good now. You're like, what? <laughs> what happened? It's like the smelly kid coming up to you at prom and you're like, all right, fine, one dance. And he's like, I was just gonna ask you where the bathroom is. You're like, fuck you, Travis. <laughs> Out of here, just trying to be nice. I, uh, I love my mom so much, she's amazing, but she's been trying to give me career advice and none of it's helpful, you know? She doesn't understand that there are different levels of fame in comedy. She thinks that all comics are best friends. She'll be like, why don't you call Jerry Seinfeld? <laughs> and ask to do comedians in cars getting coffee. And I'm like, mom, I can't even get a guy to jerk off to my feet. <laughs> Let's lower expectations. Like, this is where my career is at. I have a foosball web series on YouTube, okay? I'm like, here. When my mom heard that, she goes, you know who I bet would love to do your YouTube show? Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you bet, huh? Well, let's put some money on it, cause I bet she fucking wouldn't. <laughs> if I win, you have to let me back on your cell phone plan. She's always trying to find ways to get me on television. Like when she heard I was getting divorced, she sent me a text that said, now that you're single, you can go on The Bachelor or Miss America. <laughs> I was like, yeah, cause marriage is what was holding me back <laughs> from becoming Miss America. <laughs> Pretty sure part of the qualifications include hasn't been paid in jello shots to tell dick jokes. <laughs> so, I don't think I'm getting in. <laughs> I was talking about the, <clears throat> the foosball web series. So, my entire family and I are actually world champion foosball players. Uh, thank you, thank you. I know it sounds made up, I swear it's real. My parents met playing in a professional foosball tournament in the 80s. So I literally wouldn't exist if it weren't for foosball. <laughs> Which is sad. Uh, but you know, some of you wouldn't exist if it weren't for boxed wine. So it's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> We're all a little garbage. Let's not judge each other. It gets weirder. Not only is my dad a pro foosball player, he's also a slam poetry champion. <laughs> and an international yo-yo man. <laughs> yeah, my dad has the sex appeal of a fanny pack. <laughs> Crushing it. 
and my mom is in the Foosball Hall of Fame, and they've been training me to play since I was like two years old. But since no one suspects that I'm a pro foosball player, I love to hustle people, right? And so I usually play against other comedians on my web series, but we did this special episode where I went undercover in Vegas, and I hustled drunk dudes on the Vegas Strip. <laughs> So I wore this low cut top, I talked in the worst voice, and my camera crew and I would go up to groups of guys and I'd go, hi, um, my name's Kelsey, and I have this web series where I do things that I've never done before for the first time. <laughs> um, it's called Pop My Cherry. <laughs> It's silly, you know. Um, so, I've never played foosball before, and we just found this table, and I was just wondering if you guys want to play me. And every group of guys is like, hell yeah, bitch, let's go. <laughs> yeah, play right now. So I would play the first game terribly on purpose, right? I would giggle a bunch, spin the rods a lot, really build up their confidence. And then I go, okay, so I think I've got the hang of it now, and this is Vegas, so we should play for money. <laughs> and every guy would put their whole wallet on the table. <laughs> and they'd hand me the ball and go, here, you can serve first. And that's when I pull out my foosball grip glove. <laughs> Checkmate, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, I've never done cocaine, but I would assume it's a similar rush. Uh, I've only done Parmesan cheese, which also exhilarating. A lot cheaper. So I mentioned that my ex and I, we were together for a really long time, so we knew so much about each other. But one thing that he didn't know about me until toward the end, I told him that sometimes I pee in the shower. And by sometimes, I mean every time. <laughs> and don't you guys act like you don't do it too. We are all swamp monsters. There is no drug in the history of time with a higher addiction rate than peeing in the shower. Okay? You think you're better than that? You think you're above doing it? And then you let yourself do it one time. And you're like, well, I guess I'm doing this every day for the rest of my life. It is the best. I feel like I'm on vacation every day. Just carefree living. And I thought that he and I were gonna bond over it, you know? Like maybe we had the same dirty little secret. And instead, he was like, what? Oh, gross. That means every time I shower, I've just been standing in your pee. I was like, I do it while I'm showering. Like, the water takes it down the drain immediately. You're acting like I walk into our bathroom, <laughs> drop my pants, stand in the shower, and just piss on dry porcelain like a serial killer. <laughs> and then get out, put my pants back on, and just leave you a puddle of urine like a feral cat. I was like, I'm gonna start peeing on your pillow, give you some real problems. <laughs> this is nonsense. One of my friends told me that apparently we're all supposed to throw our pillows away once a year and get new ones. You guys been doing that? <laughs> uh, feels good to be gross together, huh? We all have such a weird attitude toward pillows because they cost like 10 bucks, but we all keep the same disgusting <laughs> pillows for decades, like it's the Great Depression. <laughs> like we're some old prospector like, well this here's the pillow they gave me at the orphanage and I'll be goddamned if this ain't the same pillow I die with. <laughs> Why? Pillows and towels, right? Like, we never get rid of towels. 
they just eventually become the ones you like dry the dog with. <laughs> Why are you holding on to so many? Do we all think we're gonna have like a home birth someday? <laughs> I'm gonna sop some stuff up. My grandparents' towels are historical artifacts at this point. I don't know if you've visited your elders recently. They have washcloths that look like they were woven from wheat. I'm like, did this belong to Jesus? I feel like I'm drying my face with a Triscuit. My eyelids are bleeding. So I got on dating apps for the first time last year and uh, they let me onto the celebrity dating app, which, listen, obviously they use the term celebrity real loosely, okay? <laughs> if they saw my wiki feed, they'd be like, absolutely not. We got <laughs> She can't sit with us. <laughs> yeah, they let in somebody who's 32 and still shops at Forever 21. So I for sure tricked them. Uh, I know that store is trash, but I just can't stop going. I <laughs> I just love it so much. The last time I was there, I told the girl at the register that I found a makeup stain on this tank top I wanted, and I asked if I could get a discount, and she just stared at me with dead eyes and was like, it's already only $2.99. <laughs> like, do you want us to just give you the tank top? <laughs> and pay off your student loans. <laughs> this is Forever 21, everything's stained. It's basically an animal shelter. God, I love that store. <laughs> the first date I went on through the celebrity app was such a disaster. I went out with this guy who was from Europe originally. So he had this really thick European accent and some of the words he said sounded like other words. So he's telling me about his cat, and he goes, yeah, you know, I, uh, I love my cat, but uh, he rapes my shirts. <laughs> and my brain was like, that can't be right. <laughs> nope. So I sat with it for a second, and I was like, oh, oh, he rips your shirts. Okay, sorry, I just, I thought you said that he rapes your shirts. And with zero hesitation, this dude goes, yeah, no, he rapes my shirts and I, uh, I don't understand why, because he's neutered, but he will not stop raping my shirts, so. <laughs> then I had to hide my shirts and then I gave him a blanket and now that's his rape blanket. And I'm like, what the fuck? Am I on a hidden camera show? Where if this dude says rape 18 times before dessert, he wins a jet ski? Like, <laughs> is this one of Ted Bundy's kids? What? I just started covering all my holes. I was like, I don't like this. This is a bad, bad vibe. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna give this five more minutes. So he starts telling me that he goes on boats a lot. And I was like, oh, you ever worry about shark attacks? And I swear to God, he goes, yeah, no, you don't really have to worry about sharks so much, but uh, you do have to worry about dolphins because they are the rapists of the sea. And I was like, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Enjoy the jet ski, I'm sure you won. <laughs> lunatic. That was my first dating app experience. Fortunately, it's been better since then. Uh, I'm seeing a guy in his 40s now. Uh, he has adult children, okay? He has lived more life than I have. He knows more things. And I told him that I was hesitant to hook up with him the first time because I was on my period. And he goes, I don't get why guys are ever grossed out by that. You're just shedding your uterine lining. <laughs> I was like, that is the hottest thing that anybody's ever said to me. I didn't even know that's what happens during my period. I was like, okay, Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Who are you? The bar is set real low after old rape blanket, so. <laughs> you just do a gentle hop over into my heart, you know, with your Snapple fun facts about periods. <laughs> like, I don't know 
know any of those things. Somebody could come up to me on the street with a microphone and be like, ma'am, for a million dollars, what happens during your period? And I'd be like, I'm gonna go with the egg is melting. <laughs> And they'd be like, were you homeschooled? <laughs> My parents were playing foosball. I don't know. They didn't teach me these things. <laughs> he's, uh, he's also the first guy I've ever been with who has had a vasectomy. So I had some questions about that. I was like, when you finish, is it clear? <laughs> like that white Gatorade flavor? Just have Glacier Frost on tap? What's going on? I'm just trying to prepare myself. I was like, does it taste better when there aren't kids in it? <laughs> it's like, or maybe it's just air, right? Like one of those pressurized keyboard dusters that's like, psh, you're like, oh. startles you. You gotta point it away or you'll lose an eye. And maybe fix a tire. Finally, I just went Bill Nye on his ass. I was like, I am blowing you in the name of science. This is field research at this point. And uh, it turns out it's like normal. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's kind of like Beyond Burger. looks the same. And then once it's in your mouth, you're like, something's missing. <laughs> this is like diet cum. <laughs> it's another joke I wrote next to Wendell. He, uh... <laughs> yeah, he got an eyeful that flight. He <laughs> saw some things. A lot of my friends are getting engaged and married right now, and one of them just had an engagement party with her fiance, and they played one of those games where they have signs that say him and her, and they held them up when they got asked questions like, who's the better cook? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Who takes longer to get ready? <laughs> We're all just like, oh my God. Like, you guys are getting married. Let's get into some real shit. Like, who has a drinking problem? <laughs> Who's settling? <laughs> I'm like, let me run this game, huh? <laughs> and we'll call it getting cold feet. <laughs> Let's test drive this son of a gun. So one of the things that I learned that was hard in going from being married and living with somebody for eight years into being single and living alone is that no one touches you anymore. And I know it sounds weird to say it like that, but if you live with somebody, there's like a fair amount of touching that happens throughout the day. So my lowest point in quarantine, I started watching ASMR videos on YouTube <laughs> where a girl would hold a hairbrush up to the camera lens and she would simulate that she was brushing your hair. <laughs> and I would just ram my forehead up against my laptop. <laughs> like, uh, oh, pet me, Rachel. <laughs> you dirty bitch. <laughs> as soon as businesses opened up, I made all of the touching appointments. I was like, I'm getting a massage, I'm getting a manicure. Look, I made a dentist appointment just because I missed feeling somebody in my mouth, okay? <laughs> Don't you judge me, it was hard. My dentist is this like 65 year old Armenian man. I was like, floss it up, daddy. <laughs> Use your toys. <laughs> he was like, I prefer you call them tools. I was like, Dimitri, I need this. <laughs> Hush your lips. Just tell me when to spit. <laughs> I 
one of the appointments I had made was for a bikini wax. And I had been going to salons before COVID to get bikini waxes. I had tried doing some of those like at home kits and I just learned that there are some parts of my nethers that I do not have the strength of spirit <laughs> to wax myself. Listen to me, if you can wax your own lips, you're a psychopath. <laughs> That is some Steve-O jackass level masochism. <laughs> I want no part of it. So I'd been going to the salons, and then the salons closed for six months, and things got scary. <laughs> There's so many beautiful women here tonight. I feel like a lot of women started 2020 with like, a landing strip. And by July, it was just a full airport. <laughs> <laughs> you can land anywhere. There's a Cinnabon and a Panda Express. There's a shuttle that takes you to a rental car lot. I mean, employees, W9s, it's a lot going on. So finally, the salons opened back up and I immediately made an appointment. And I remembered there's that rule that the hair has to be at least a quarter inch long in order for the wax to be able to pick it up. And... <laughs> Do we need a medic? Are you okay? Are you... <laughs> Too much for you? She's like, I, it's a 7.30 show. I didn't know what this was. I, I don't like hockey and we had a Groupon, but I, she's... <laughs> she's like, this is not the Christian way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, so I remembered there's that rule that the hair has to be at least a quarter inch long in order for the wax to be able to pick it up. And I looked down and was like, well, that's not gonna be a problem. <laughs> but for the first time in my life, I worried that maybe it's bad if the hair is longer than a quarter inch. So I called the salon. So embarrassing. I was like, hey, I have an appointment today. It's been a rough quarantine. Is there like a maximum hair requirement? And this poor girl just goes, I mean, how long are we talking? <laughs> And I wasn't prepared to answer that. <laughs> so I panicked and was like, we could probably donate it. No. <laughs> like, I don't know if Locks of Love specifies which type of hair they accept, but maybe somebody needs fake eyelashes. I don't know. We don't <laughs> We don't know where that hair comes from. I'm all just throwing them on and praying, but it could be pubes. I don't know. Basically, I feel like a lot of us were walking around kind of looking like the opposite of a porn star in 2020, right? Which is totally fine. Uh, my friend Jay actually told me that my celebrity lookalike is this porn star named Jessie Rogers. So I Googled her, and the first picture that popped up was her doing hardcore anal. And got a little creeped out, realizing that my friend Jay saw that and thought, <laughs> you know who this reminds me of? <laughs> Old gaping butthole Kelsaru. <laughs> yeah. Old backdoor cook, look at her go. <laughs> a plus. What is the matter with you, Jay? But by the way, it's so nice to be able to tell that joke in person again because I've had to tell it on mostly virtual shows the past two years, and I realized that halfway through the joke, everybody would just open a new browser. <laughs> it would just get really quiet, and I'd be like, 
hello? <laughs> Everybody show me your hands. I don't trust you. What are you doing? I, uh, I had to check into a hotel on the road recently, and it was early in the morning, and the woman checking me out, which she's a little older, and uh, she goes, I just have to tell you, you look so much like Amy Adams. Huh, I don't know if you ever hear that, but you really look like her. And it took all of my strength to not pull my phone out and be like, you know who everybody else says I look like? And just... <laughs> this really blaster with a b-hole at 8 a.m. I just, I couldn't do it. I do think that Jesse Rogers and I, we, we do look alike. Uh, we have some different hobbies. <laughs> you know, I've never just sat on a lava lamp. <laughs> <laughs> For example. <laughs> like, my ex-husband and I, we didn't even buy a sex toy until seven years into the relationship. We had just been Flintstone in that shit. <laughs> just very little house on the prairie. Just churning butter, very innocent. We ended up buying one of those vibrating wand things, and I gotta be honest, never liked it. Way too intense for me. Even on the lowest setting, this thing is like for blasting rocks. I was like, is this what you women have been using this whole time? I barely touched it to my body. My feet lifted off the ground. I took flight. I was not turned on at all, I was terrified. I was like, did I just puree my clit? Oh my God. No, 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 no. This thing is meant for industrial kitchens, okay? It's for liquefying raw vegetables. It's crazy. So I ended up asking some of my friends about it and it turns out that they have this toy and they use it on the highest setting in order to have an orgasm. I was like, how have you not completely erased your vagina? <laughs> Just sanded it down to a smooth slab of granite. <laughs> like a Barbie crotch. Yeah. Go bowling on it. And something I've learned about you dudes is that a lot of you guys like stuff that vibrates too. So one night before the divorce, my ex and I were out drinking. I'd had a few gin and hams. <laughs> as you do. And when we got home, I was just feeling a little extra spicy, so I decided to crank it to 10 just to see what would happen. And the moment I touched it to his junk, his balls, whoop. <laughs> went up inside his body. I didn't even know they could do that. I was just staring at him like, oh. Do they stay up there until you sneeze really hard? How do you get back? Have to do a hard man kegel? I don't know. A couple minutes went by, didn't see anything. I panicked. I started pushing on his belly button really hard, like, trying to eject quarters out of a ski ball machine. I was like, come on, get out of there. Another few minutes, still nothing. I was like, oh, I think those are ovaries now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I gave you an accidental gender change. <laughs> Oops. So I'm in therapy. Anybody here in therapy? <laughs> oh, wow, that's a nice response. Usually it's just one person that's like, help, help. <laughs> Let's talk to you. Yeah, I think therapy is amazing, uh, but I guess not everybody always needs therapy. Uh, some people do need therapy. And you can usually tell who those people are because they say things like, I don't need any fucking therapy. I prefer to be a burden to my loved ones. And you're like, uh, sir, this is an Arby's. Why are you shouting? You're alarming the children. I had to work on my self-worth in therapy because I kept attracting some of the wrong people. One of my friends told me this quote. She said, once you know your worth, you'll stop giving people discounts. And I was like, well, slap my tits and call me Groupon, baby. 
boy. I've been out here like, hey, you got a personality disorder and no job, this pussy's 90% off. Hey! Hey, hey, hey. No credit, no problem. Get in here. <laughs> that makes it sound like my life has been a dick buffet. It has not. Uh, I have a very low body count. I love that that's what we call it, body count. Like, we're all just fucking people to death. Like, <laughs> It sounds so system of a down for no reason, you know? <laughs> I think I would have a higher body count if STDs didn't exist, but I'm just so terrified to ever get one that I don't want to gamble. Like, I just can't believe that in 2022, our best defense against them is still just condoms in the honor system. <laughs> Scouts honor, bro. I'm like, you lied about your height. I'm supposed to trust you on chlamydia? No. <laughs> Kick rocks, get out of here. I was reading online that uh, some of the very first condoms back in the 1800s were really thick. Like they used to basically just cut up bike tires. <laughs> and they've obviously gotten thinner over time, which I'm sure was a guy's idea, you know. I bet the women back then were pissed like, but keep it girthy. <laughs> Keep that deep dish condom on. <laughs> we don't have electricity. This is the only joy I have. <laughs> I had a woman come to one of my shows recently who I think was from the 1800s. Um, she was very old. And she came up to me afterward and she was like, I was a makeup artist for 30 years. And at this point I'm thinking, oh, I think she's about to compliment my makeup. That's so nice. And then she goes, your face was so oily when you were on stage. It was the only thing I could look at. The lights were hitting it so bright that I had to squint to look at you. And that's when I heard my brain say, well, tonight's the night we go to jail for throat punching someone's Nana. You just hit a certain age where you walk around like, fuck it, burn it to the ground. Like, <laughs> just traumatizing people. I'm like, who is this woman's poor husband? You know, we gotta save him. I just picture him getting out of the shower and she's like, your balls make me sick. <laughs> of course, I didn't say any of that to her. I was just like, what powder do you recommend? <laughs> I have no backbone. I've also become self-conscious of this very specific thing. Did you girls have that dress code in middle school where you had to wear shorts that were longer than the length of your fingertips to your sides? Okay, All right? To prevent girls from wearing booty shorts. So that was the day I learned I have freakishly long arms. <laughs> for my short height. I'm only 5'4". All the girls had to line up. We put our arms down. And I don't know if you can see what's happening right now. <laughs> I'll show you on this side too. <laughs> but I did this and I looked down and I was like, oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wear men's Jinko jeans <laughs> to not get expelled. I'm just rolling into home ec with my chain wallet and lugs, like. <laughs> Let's bake these muffins, Diane. <laughs> the third member of the Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> I don't know much about the Insane Clown Posse, but it does make me laugh, picturing those guys having to take their makeup off at the end of the night. <laughs> Cause they just, they seem so tough on stage. Like I'm gonna stab this dude and bang your chick. And then two hours later, they're like, these Neutrogena wipes are lovely. Oh. <laughs> Don't burn my eyes. <laughs> so before I started headlining, I used to open on tour for a comedian named Jim Norton. Anybody here Jim Norton fan? <laughs> nice. Got some Jim heads in the house. So Jim's favorite thing to do is to humiliate people. And I made the mistake of telling him that I embarrass very easily for a comedian. And he just milked that every day for three years on tour. 
when we were in public, he would constantly accuse me of shoplifting. <laughs> we would be checking out at a CVS pharmacy and just deadpan in front of the cashier, he would turn to me and go, are you not gonna pay for all the things in your purse? <laughs> and I would just start shivering like a shelter chihuahua, like. I would just end up paying for lipstick that I've owned for five years. I was like, just take my money. I'm so sorry. I hate this. It was traumatizing. By far, the most embarrassing thing he would do, he would do with his bodyguard. We traveled with this seven foot tall guy named Kenny. Picture Frankenstein with less people skills. <laughs> just an oaf. And I don't know if you women have ever ordered anything on victoriasecret.com, but sometimes you get that free tote bag with purchase. Okay. <laughs> If you have even a shred of self-respect, you immediately throw it in the garbage where it belongs. I used it as my day-to-day -day purse for seven years. <laughs> I have no dignity. It says Victoria's Secret in big letters on the sides, like it's very obnoxious. And I would travel with this. So when we were on tour, we'd have to get to the airport at five in the morning. And you guys know how you look at the airport at 5 a.m., right? Just greasy, disheveled, gross. So I'd look like that and I'd have this bag and everybody's just quietly shuffling about the airport. And all of a sudden, his bodyguard would shout, Victoria's Secret model coming through. <laughs> and everybody and I mean everybody, would stop and look at me wide-eyed and then go. <laughs> Do you know how quickly your self-esteem goes in the toilet? When you can watch a hundred people decide in half a second, no, she's not. You're like, all right. <laughs> Just gonna go walk into traffic now, thanks. <laughs> so I'm from Washington State originally and uh, they just passed this new legislation that is banning schools from continuing to use Native American mascots, which is great. And the high school I went to, our mascot was the Blackhawks. And it takes a linguistic specialist to tell the difference between somebody saying Blackhawks <laughs> and Blackhawks. And let me tell you, it was pretty wild growing up, going to football games and watching a dozen cheerleaders shout to a stand of parents, we love Blackhawks, yes we do, we love Blackhawks, how about you? And then watching everybody on the other team be like, what the fuck? It's like the mating call of the Kardashians. <laughs> so I had my bachelorette party down in Vegas and we went to the Magic Mike live show. Has anybody here been to the Magic Mike live show? Oh, we got a few, oh, are you still wet? Hey. <laughs> Girl, it is crazy what happens at the show. They brought it back during COVID, which surprised me because if we are concerned about droplets, women are gushing fluid at the show. <laughs> Medically, it's a problem, okay? It changes the humidity in the room. <laughs> women with straight hair leave with curly hair. It's like a rainforest cafe in there. <laughs> that air is thick. Three C's. But now that the show's back, you gotta go. Oh, it is the cream of the cock. Just, oh. <laughs> Chef's kiss. For two hours, these oiled up six packs just grind the stage, and they sing to you, they lick whipped cream off your body, and then they bring some women on stage, and then they take your top off, and then they take your pants off, and then they fuck you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just want to see how far you guys would go with me on that part. <laughs> Did you hear how quiet it got in here? Oh. Could you feel every woman just slowly leaning further forward in her seat, like, I'm pulling out her phone, checking flights to Vegas. <laughs> <A> taxi! <laughs> 
Were you like, was I in the bathroom when that happened? <laughs> How did I miss that? No, they don't do that. That'd be pretty dope. <laughs> Probably charge a lot more for tickets. But you do get a lot for your money. At the end of the show, they do bring some women on stage and then they put you in harnesses and they put one of the guys beneath you and you get to like ride the men into the sky <laughs> like free willy. <laughs> they get you hornier than you've ever been in your entire life. And then they just set you loose. Back into the wild. Single dudes, if you were ever trying to fuck in Vegas, just go stand outside the Magic Mike exit. Like a catcher. We're running out of there, holes open like a starfish, ready to go. Uh, that's something TripAdvisor doesn't tell you, and that's what I'm here for. I'm like your creepy uncle. I'm just helping you get laid. I would like to go back to the show, but not for anything wedding related, because there's usually two types of women that go. The host comes out and he goes, all right, ladies, make some noise if you're here for a bachelorette party. And there's a bunch of young 20-something girls that are like, ah, oh my God, penises, ah. <laughs> And then the host goes, all right, now who here's celebrating a divorce? <laughs> And it's just one table of women in their 40s like, give me your dick. You're like, oh my God. choice for profanity laden stand up comedies what's your target demo Kyle oh polygamous snowboarders of course thank you for having me to record this special I do appreciate it we're having a good day um, I'm, I'm just happy to be out in the world I'm happy to be back uh, doing uh, live comedy. We've been back for a little while, but I just, I need this. I can't uh, perform comedy without the checks and balances of a human interaction. You know, over pandemic, I was writing what I thought was comedy, but I didn't have this checks and balance system. Turns out I was just writing little manifestos. That's all I was writing. <laughs> I was writing little manifestos, and I wouldn't find out about that until like just weeks later when I would do a Zoom comedy show, which was just the bane of my existence. <laughs> I'd just sit there and just in my room, write a joke, like that's perfect, I've never written anything funnier. And then <laughs> just sit in the darkness for weeks with a bottle, and then my computer would light up like time for Zoom comedy. And I would just lean in, I was just pale and too close to the camera. <laughs> Just like every conspiracy theorist, like, 5G, make some read your minds. Like, that was <laughs> just too close with, like, one weird lamp offset in the background to do comedy. And I'm like, all right, Kyle, you're up. And I just say some shit like, the problem with the left is that we're too empathetic to people with mental health issues, and that's why we'll never produce a viable assassin. They're like, oh, <laughs> hey. Um, mm. <laughs> You can't, that's not like, ha ha, I get it, but you can't, 
<laughs> you can't say that. Not on Zoom, anyway. They're recording this. Now you gotta explain jokes to the FBI. Is that what you wanted to do? <laughs> now you explain comedy to the feds. <laughs> even just the minutia of doing live stand. I mean, the stuff that comes along with it, I'm like, excited to be back to. Even the traveling elements, I'll be happy with I'm excited to be on uh, airplanes again. I'm sure that'll get obnoxious soon enough, but I just like being on there. I, I like saying thank you to the pilot when I walk off the plane. I like doing that. How many people say thank you to the pilot when you get off the plane? All right. It's a decent amount, but it's not everybody. What's wrong with you? Why are you gonna be a jerk? That's all they want. That's all a pilot wants. If you fly, that's the first thing. As soon as they park, the door just flies open at the front. They're just like. <laughs> hey, hey, do you notice how we didn't all die? <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome for that. I did that for you. And we all just shuffle off in our pajama bottoms and Crocs, like, don't make eye contact with me. <laughs> so rude. That's all they want is a thank you for that job. They're up there, they're tucked in up there. They are tucked in with dress shoes the whole time. And we're back there with like half a boner and sweatpants. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> Nodding off on pills and tiny bottles of booze. <laughs> they're wearing a goddamn sport coat up there for you. You ever look in a cockpit? It's a panic room. It's just a chamber, it's a chamber of anxiety for anybody that doesn't know. And they know, they know all the buttons, all the switches, they know what to do. The windshield, that's arbitrary, that's for us. If a pilot sees something wrong out the windshield, we're dead, we're already dead. Like that, that, nobody's gonna get on a plane without a windshield. That's for you guys to feel all right. If something's going wrong out there, we're fucked, man. We're just straight up fucked, I'll tell you that. At the beginning, they get in there and just know they're like, the, every switch, like, don't die, don't die, don't die, will not die. We won't die here, won't die if I do that. Better not die, better not die, better not die. Oh, here's the big old good luck lever, we need that. Don't die, shit, almost, if I didn't do this, we would have definitely died. Fuck, thank God, don't die. And here we go, not dying. And then we all just hung over, shuffling off like the landing was a little choppy, I don't know. Meanwhile, I will tip a Lyft driver like an angel that walks the earth. I will, I will just throw my whole wallet at somebody like, thank you for being a literal messenger from God who drove me home from the bar that I walked to five hours ago. You're the most blessed angel. What's your name? I'm gonna name my firstborn child after you. They're already born, but they suck, and maybe with your name, they'll be better. So I'm gonna call them that. And that's thank you for your service. I've said thank you for your service to a Lyft driver more than I've ever said to anybody in an actual military uniform. <laughs> even the little things about travel, like even just staying in hotels, I have to stay in hotels for this. And I, I like staying in hotels. They're always tidier than I keep my own place. I like that. I'm like, oh, that's what a, that's what a made bed. Ah, <laughs> Look at that. It's just not this omelet of blankets that's on top. Okay. <laughs> And don't be the per there's always somebody like, I like staying in hotels. Somebody's like, hotels are filthy. I'm gonna show you a YouTube video where somebody went in with a black light. But don't, don't do that. Don't be that person. I know, I'm not an asshole. I'm aware of what the world is like. Let people like what they like. Don't think that you're better because you ruined what somebody else enjoys. Oh, you like hotels? Don't look behind the curtains, that's rough. Shut, you're, that's the type of person's like, oh, you like shrimp? You know that line on the back is poop. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Let people like what they like. I know that hotels can be horrifying places, but I don't, I don't look under the bed. I don't do the little dust check on stuff. I just need the illusion of cleanliness. I don't look at the pillows. God forbid. Don't, <laughs> just don't, if you're, never look at pillows. Just do that for yourself. Ne if you're a single man in here, leave now, go buy new pillows. Go <laughs> right now. You're like, why? That's why, that's why. <laughs> because you don't, go right now, you can go to Bed Bath & Beyond, stop at anybody's mailbox, take their coupon out of it, <laughs> and get 20% off doing bed laundry in the daylights, linens if you're classy. I was, doing, I was doing my bed laundry in the daylight, sober, so I was retaining details. And I, 
I went to unshe the pillow because the pillowcase, that's the case for the pillow that preserves the pillow. Does not. I, I don't even know how I got pillows. Nobody remembers, especially dudes, you don't remember when you bought pillows. I moved to Los Angeles in 2003 with one pillow. Eventually, I had five pillows. At 1.7, then down to three. No idea, it's just like living in a hostel. Something you get friends, come and go. And I unsheathed what I assumed to be a pillow one day in the daylight. And what I, what I extracted from that pillowcase, it had the same just texture and patina as a Wild West Wanted poster. It was just, it was, it was gold and slick. The edges were crumbly and curled. One side was burnt. How did that even happen? <laughs> it looked like a map to the new world. That's what it looked like. <laughs> it looked like, it clearly, like whatever fluids come out of my face at night had just, the liquid had just expanded and then create rudimentary coastlines of the Americas <laughs> over here. Yo, know, you could tell this is how they went from the Mediterranean to here. This is, this is where the old gays went looking for spices back in the day. Are, that's, that's how we got the spots. That's what happened when you were gay back in the day and you couldn't tell people in the 1300s in Europe that you're gay. You're just like, me and the boys were going on a cruise. And that's, that's how you had to be gay. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, we're looking for cinnamon. That's gay, that's super gay. But that's what they had to do, so thank them for that. You thank them for the spices. This part of the pillow just says, here be monsters. That's all it says there. Just browns and yellows and different, and whatever does that to the pillow comes out of my head. It comes out of my head at night. At night, when you don't know what's happening. Your unconscious being protects you of the horrors of your physical realm at that point. We all think like, oh, I snore, but probably cute like, probably whimpers and wheezes. Probably like a new little kitten. <laughs> no, you snore like a dragon with no lower jaw. That's how you snore. And you emit fluid like a chocolate fountain filled with mucus. That's how we all sleep, just You snore like a fire plug filled with pudding. That's how you snore. <laughs> and you think you can forget until you look at your pillow, which is now just a sponge that collects the memories of your nightmares. <laughs> just a document of your savagery. So anyway, I don't look at the pillows in the hotel. I just like stay. Thank you. I I like staying in the hotels. I, 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 like, I, I lay in bed way past checkout. That's what I like now, just base level excitement. Like I use words in conversation that I don't really know what they mean. And that's my, that's my bungee jumping at this point. <laughs> that's it, it's just like, I, I don't know man, it sounds, sounds pretty ubiquitous to me. <laughs> Non sequitur, I think that's perfectly sequitur. <laughs> well, so that's my chi. I just like laying in bed way past checkout and seeing if I get caught. That's like. <laughs> Checkout's at noon, we'll see. <laughs> you gotta lay real still, you gotta be real quiet. I call it pulling an Anne Frank, that's what I call it. I lay there. <laughs> and, uh, It's real scary when they're in the hall. Uh oh. <laughs> I know, it, okay, it's hard to do that kind of joke when I look like I should be at home plotting to kidnap a Democratic governor. So. <laughs> Let it be known. <laughs> I have to say, I am not anti Semitic. I'm like the most Semitic. I love them. <laughs> I won't go to the Holocaust Museum, though. Nope. Not, I'll, I'll explain. It's not like I'm just gonna move on to the next joke. He let that one hang out there for a while. Um, no, I don't wanna go to the Holocaust Museum because I am a coward. That's it, that's, uh, that's the symbol. I, uh, it, try, uh, it happened, all right? That's not the route I'm going with this. It happened, I know it happened, and it was bad, real bad, like the worst. 
And I know that, and I'm uh, too scared to deal with the emotions that would come with visiting a Holocaust museum. <laughs> like, that's a, that's a big day. <laughs> that's a, wow, <laughs> you don't want to do anything else? Um, okay. <laughs> and shit, maybe I'm wrong. Does anybody here want to go to the Holocaust museum? Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> and anybody who says yes, it's always in theory. It's never like, okay, tomorrow? They're like, oh, I, I didn't know tomorrow. It's like, <laughs> I have plans, but let's put it on a calendar and think about doing the right thing. No, we're all cowards and that's okay. <laughs> Glad the Holocaust Museum is there. It's there for education. And that's how the majority of people that go to the Holocaust Museum, they are field trips, which I find a tad ironic. That just some, somebody's like, oh, we got this Holocaust Museum. How are we gonna get people in there? We, oh, we could transport them in against their will. It's like, whoa, hey. I don't, Has our marketing guy even been inside yet? Because that's like, that's like a main thing that happened. You can't just look at the pictures. You got to read the captions. <laughs> they didn't just love trains, man. <laughs> that one's a bit too far. That one went. I was kind of a hypocrite through the whole pandemic. Like I. Again, I tell you, get vaccine. I tell you, trust science. I went on a cruise. I went on a cruise during the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, all right, here it is. <laughs> well, first off, of course, the cruise was going to happen. It was a cruise. It was a heavy metal cruise. It was a cruise filled with heavy metal bands. Of course, that was going to set sail. Metalheads are not scared of viruses. <laughs> Do you know metalheads? Like old school. They, they, half of them are walking around with gonorrhea that they got at the original Ozfest. <laughs> And they're proud of it. They're proud, they're hanging on to it like it's a sourdough starter. They're like, yeah, man, these warts saw Randy Rhodes live, dude. <laughs> they had protocols, I did, I did, I forget whichever test is where you do a test in front of your computer and then a doctor's watching you from the doctor. I just gave a stranger access to my webcam. <laughs> That's a, the, this special might not be the thing you see on the internet of me coming up soon. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm like, why are you just in a bedroom too, man? Like, be in a laboratory. You got the same bad lighting setup as me. Like, what, what is that, a mud vein poster in the back? You just work for the cruise. You work for the cruise. I got this stranger, and I'm just in my room. He's watching me. I'm four knuckles deep with a Q-tip into my gray matter. That's the closest I'm ever going to feel to a cam girl was that moment. <laughs> It's a guy just watching me drill my orifice. <laughs> like, oh, deeper, Daddy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you want me to do now? Spin it a little? <laughs> Ooh, you're sick. You're naughty. They say they take protocols. They go, like, oh, we will do an intensive questionnaire to make sure you're healthy. It's when they give you the questionnaire. You spend all your money to get on the boat. Then you spend your money to fly to get to the port city. And then your bags are packed. They take your bags. Those are on the boat. All your money, all the shit's on the boat. And there's a little guy in a fun kiosk. If you've never been on a cruise, there's a guy before you get on the boat. And he's just a little party guy. Maybe he's got a maracas or something. Right? Like, time to buy your drink package. So you have to gamble on how much booze you think you're going to drink on the cruise before you get on the cruise. And nobody is tame at that point. You're going on a cruise. Nobody's like, I better go for the bronze tier. I'm probably going to take it easy on the way to Cozumel. No. Everybody's like, fucking diamond package, baby. I will absolutely drink $975 worth of alcohol every day on this cruise. You will not. You absolutely will not. By the next day, you will have a one shaky glass of white wine in your hand. Just like, I at least got to break 150 to feel good about myself. You're gonna poison yourself out of your own frugality. And now you spend more money on that. Now it's time to get on the boat, and here we go. And now you're on the plank, on the way to the boat. There's the boat. Seawater is just underneath you. Fish and dolphins. There's the land, sayonara, suckers. And that's when they hand you the questionnaire. That's where they expect you to be truthful about your ailments in that moment. And you, everybody, like nobody's, a fool. Oh, I got the sniffles, always or never. What do you want me to say? I'm getting, what, what? My parents are first cousins. You bet your ass they are. <laughs> Let me on this boat. There's zip lines to be zipped. <laughs> One of the questions is like, do you have diarrhea? How dare you? <laughs> do I have diarrhea? I'm going on a cruise. If I don't have it now, give me 20 minutes. <laughs> 
In a half hour, in a half hour, I'll be on my third crab daiquiri of this voyage. <laughs> it is not a drink that is included in the diamond package. It's one that I'll assemble myself by getting a pitcher of any tropical beverage that I will then take right to the buffet, which I will treat like a death row inmate. <laughs> Asparagus dipped in hot fudge? Why not? We're gonna die. That's where I'll get an armful of crab legs and hang them off the pitcher. What for dipping? In 45 minutes, an employee of this cruise line will come by the hot tub where I've parked myself and tell me to cease my behavior immediately because I will be in that hot tub playing my favorite game of all time called Guess the Catch of the Day. It's not a game, it's really just a sex crime. It's where I, Kyle Kinane, am sitting there swirling one crab leg around whatever warm gin and fruit is left in the pitcher. I'll be wearing men's swim trunks, the old-timey kind where there's an outer shell and an inner panty. <laughs> Any stranger unfortunate enough to sit in that hot tub with me will now be a contestant of the game. And I'll say, I wonder what the catch of the day is. And they'll go, catch of the day. And that's why I'll just move the outer shell to the side, <laughs> revealing my netted genitals. <laughs> and, and I'll say, oh, it looks like a shrimp and two scallops today. <laughs> that's the game, nobody wins. Nobody wins. Do I have diarrhea? I'll shit off the side of this boat if I want to. I'll hang my lily white ass off the mezzanine and I will unload into the life rafts. Women and children first, be my guest. What are you gonna do, turn it around? We're in international waters, bitch. Don't call yourself carnival if you're not ready for the implications. I don't go on many cruises. <laughs> but that's the thing, like, listen, I'm, I'm gonna go on to vaccine. I'm, vac I'm pro-vaccine, pro-science, but I behave in very anti-vax ways. One of those is I keep eating at Chipotle. I know it's dangerous, <laughs> and I engage in that behavior freely. I'm like, it's freedom, not fear. I will not live in a prison made up of your paranoia. Now will they got that white queso dip back on the menu anyway. <laughs> Also, Chipotle kills people every year. Every year, Chipotle has to have a press conference where they're like, ah, yeah. I've, I'm surprised we're back here again too, but ah, somebody pissed in the spinach again or something. You know? Anyway, long story short, we're sorry for your loss, you know, so. But we're gonna, we're gonna make it up to you. We're gonna offer a BOGO every Tuesday in July for your loss. You get an extra burrito on account of the, the, the love, your bereavement with burritos. Bereave, for your bereavement. There's some, it'll tie together later. So, I, so I, I ate that. And like, I, I can self-diagnose food poisoning at this point. I'm pretty familiar. I'm like, ha ha, here we go again. <laughs> Dancing with this smelly mistress another evening. <laughs> food poisoning moves around your torso in a way that it's just looking for a way out. It's like a bank heist went south and their plan B wasn't really dialed in. You're like, oh, the front doors are blocked off. What do we do, boss? I don't know, we can tunnel out the basement or jump off the roof, but we're getting out of this bitch one way or another. Like, that's, uh, that's food poisoning. This was different, this did not behave like this. This just made, just started making a little nest for itself. The uh, doctor's like, yeah, your, your appendix is inflamed. It, hadn't, it hasn't ruptured yet, but just go to the ER because they're going to have to get it out of there. So I went to the ER. I went to a suburban hospital. I can tell it was suburban because the doctor was very uh, just unimpressed with having to do another appendectomy. Just really, <laughs> just a real, another boring day at the office for this surgeon. You could tell he's out in the suburbs. Like, can't we get a goddamn knife fight in this town? <laughs> I went to school for real shit. As he came in the room I was in, he's like, yeah, we're gonna, give you a, we're gonna give you a laparoscopic appendectomy. He said that once, he only said that one time, laparoscopic appendectomy. And that was enough too, because I was like, woof, uh oh. Because that's, they charge by the syllable. So you know it's like, <laughs> laparoscopic appendectomy. Esquire, the third, pump the brakes. <laughs> After that, he just called it a lappy appy. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a fan of a nonchalant attitude from a surgeon. <laughs> say the whole word. Earn your money, say laparoscopic appendectomy, 
He wasn't even saying it to make me feel comfortable. He was just saying it out of just just making shortening his job. Because they were saying it out in the hallway too. They were just like, what's in room nine? It's lappy happy. It's nothing exciting. <laughs> like, don't do cute nicknames before the procedure. Oh, after if I live, we could be adorable afterwards. <laughs> Afterwards, this shit, man, we could put glitter on the scars. I don't give a shit. But beforehand, say the whole term, make me feel safe. I have to go under anesthesia. People don't make it through anesthesia sometimes. I could still die, even if it's routine. What if I die? That's it. I died without any information about what was happening. I just show up in heaven or whatever I qualify for at this point. I don't know. I definitely have some strikes against my license by now. But anywhere you wind up where some ethereal being with a clipboard's like, oh man, you weren't on the schedule today. And the best I can say is like, I guess my lappy appy went whoopsie poopsie. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get much more information than that. But yeah, well, thank God it went okie dokie. So we're here today. <laughs> but that, so I was thinking, but like, I, that's, unless you had a situation where it ruptured flame, you have an appendix in your body right now doing nothing. <laughs> Except maybe making a doctor $25,000. <laughs> and they just let us, they let babies leave the hospital with that. Does this baby have an unlit stick of dynamite in it? You betcha. <laughs> There's just a bunch of walking scratch off tickets for doctors. Like, oh, it's my lucky day. New set of golf clubs. How about it? 25 grand. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was circumcised like right away. That, that was the thing. That was the thing. Like, oh, we can't have him have that. Uh oh, hey, we got another baby born with too much dick. <laughs> God, man, can't believe you. Think it was if it was unnecessary, evolution would take care of. But now we got these babies keep doing too much, too much noodle. <laughs> well, should we wait till he's old enough to make up his own mind? Nah, nobody's ever wanted more dick later in life. At least not in the United States. Nope, just an American celebrating his freedom, going, I guess this is all right. <laughs> like, would like to have a choice. Why is that the worst thing? <laughs> Why is that the most horrible part of a new baby boy? The devil's calamari. Get it off of him. Why is that? Why is that? <laughs> Listen, I may have ruined uh, calamari for some of you, and you know what? Good, good. I'm glad I did. We gotta stop eating those animals. They're smart animals. <laughs> we gotta leave them alone. Those are intelligent things. You got, I'm sorry for the next trip you take to the Olive Garden. <laughs> that you don't get to enjoy your favorite app. <laughs> oh, you getting the calamari? Ugh. Ugh. Well, I can't. <laughs> I just, maybe I could eat the whole squid, but I can't eat the rings. I can't do the rings. <laughs> Why not? That's the best part. I, a guy said a thing. I don't want to ruin your experience. Just, I can't. <laughs> I just can't. You're gonna dip that in marinara. Mm. 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 Oh, I, I know we're here, but I do not feel like family right now. I will say, as pro vaccine and I'm pro science, I will say that right now. Also, I will say this um, consider the source material. First off, I'm a comedian, I shouldn't be a part of anybody's research. Ever, just ever. But the band on the podcast, no, no. <laughs> also, I will tell you to trust the science, uh, but know this, I also get sunburns every year. <laughs> Multiple sunburns. And that science has been out there since the sun, since, <laughs> since the first person has been like, oh, I gotta find some shade. That's. <laughs> I ignore that science every year. That's the dumbest look you could have in a first world country as an adult with a sunburn just going, ha ha, fuck. Yeah, man, I really thought I was gonna get around it this year. I, I was doing yard work, but I was bobbing and weaving. I didn't think it was gonna get me this year. Nope, first nice day of the year. I'm just out there like, you don't want to SPF too early. You want to get a good base coat. You want to get a, you want to brown up even, then you can lotion up. Second nice day of the year, bright red screaming cancer. Got shoulders that look like French bread pizzas. 
<laughs> then after that, I've clearly tried to apply sunblock, but I've done it alone and been too proud to ask for help. And you can see that because you can tell I've just taken the tube, I will squeeze it over my head and just let it drizzle down, just magic shell style, just oozing down my face. Just a little hot fudge Kyle, that's all. My, my head and face are a ghoulish white, like the, the holograms from the Haunted Mansion showing up next year. Ha! What you barbecuing? Blah! And the rest of it, I kind of push down around my chest and shoulders. My back is just a series of violent handprints. Just furious slappings. It looks like demons tried to drag me to hell. But thank God the copper tone was too slick and they couldn't get their talons in. Praise Jesus. Not today, Satan. You will not capture my soul for your demonic pits of hell. I managed to slip away and the flames of the underworld only burnt a spiky tribal Godsmack album cover looking thing. Okay. Relinquish your grasp, hellions. You don't know what's in those needles, dude. Fuck you. Know. That was always said by people with the shittiest tattoos. <laughs> you don't know what's in those needles, dude. It's always said by some dude, yeah, like, only God can judge me, scribbled across his chest. Did it with a guitar string and India ink and his cousin's pig roast, you know? How many only God can judge me tattoos you think have been in a courtroom? I'll tell you right now, it's all of them. It's every single one of those tattoos. <laughs> Every single person who thinks only God can judge them has been judged by a terrestrial being. <laughs> only God can judge me. 18 months? Fuck, man. <laughs> even beforehand, even, the, even before the whole thing, I just, the anti-vaxxers kind of made me laugh. Vaccines cause autism, man. Vac vaccines are causing autism. Fucking good. <laughs> We probably need more autistic kids. Yeah. They're the ones that keep beating robots at chess. <laughs> and if you don't think that's an incredibly necessary individual in this day and age, all we do is keep getting information over the algorithm. That's all we do is just like, well, accept cookies, allow tracking. Come on, man, I'm trying to look at tits on this thing. <laughs> It's only a matter of time before we're like, uh oh, the machines took over the banks and I can't get my folding money out to pay my bills. What are we gonna do? Well, we could ask Toby if he wants to take a break from building DNA strands out of Legos long enough to save the world again. Do you mind, Toby? We'd love your help. We'll get you the big chocolate milk this time. <laughs> Greta Thunberg's autistic. She's trying to save the earth from ourselves. And the best we can come up with is, ah, uh, she's like a girl. And she looks weird. She's a kid. So nah. Oh, good. Okay, I guess it's your unvaxxed, homeschooled, soft-boiled degenerate that's going to save the universe. Yeah, that kid that's going to overdose at an EDM concert and then fight with the paramedics over the flat earth theory is gonna be the one. Mama says on account of her womb being dead means that I'm just an angel for being here. Okay, we'll trust. Let's elect you into office. Listen, I'm a little burnt out, even on the people that I agree with, because it's getting a little too obnoxious on both ends of the spectrum. I'm, I'm a little sick of all my woke friends that are woke, they're woke, but they insist on having their own brand new white babies still. Like, you can't, <laughs> you can't be burdened with that much white guilt and keep, you can't be like, we are the problem. Anyway, here's another one. No, you can't. <laughs> Stop flooding the market with your shitty product. It's not, it's not how economics work. <laughs> you don't, there's plenty of kids out there to upcycle right now, so you don't need a new one. <laughs> or whatever term you want to slap on it to feel better. But then they'll try to defend it, be like, you don't understand, Kyle, I, 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 we're gonna raise our child to be a feminist. You need to raise your child to digest plastic. That's who's gonna survive. <laughs> That's who's gonna live. 
It's not looking good out there. That's what you need. But, but Kyle, I wouldn't care if my kid was trans. You should care if they have gills. You need a kid that can breathe smoke or water. That's what you need, a plastic-eating fish baby, if you want any hopes of grandkids. So I bought this van, and uh, the first stop with it to kind of test it all out, get used to it. I went down uh, camping with friends. I went to Joshua Tree National Park. And uh, yeah, okay, we know Joshua Tree, but also, you know national parks. This is Utah. You have, hmm, whoa, wow, wow. Just <laughs> stuff that you're like, don't anybody touch this. This is amazing. Arches, what's happening here? Look at, oh, dinosaur footprints? Oh, you mean God little, God's little tricksters? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Okay, I won't bother those. <laughs> but you know, but that is astonishing landscape. Just a little further south, Grand Canyon. I have to rub my eyes every time I'm there to be like, this is not a painting. This is a real, just this, this is a geographic anomaly oh, that big that I'm looking at. Um, but then you go to Joshua Tree after seeing that stuff and you're just like, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I say, no, I say you, got, you got the rock that's on top of the other rock over there. <laughs> that's been, been pretty wild, yeah, look at that. Anyway, what's over this way? Oh, bullshit. Oh, look, look at the rock that's on the, on the rock and a couple trees and doing the thing there. All right, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's nice that it's there, but it's kind of just like, yeah, it's, it's like a geographic Kardashian, you know. <laughs> It's, it's, it's hot and of no value, but we somehow keep trying to make it a thing, you know? So, you know, and all the, all the honky witches from LA and the Stevie Nicks cosplayers go out there and recharge their crystals, which, all right, all right, let's, all right I'm making fun of it, but you know what? If, if crystals make you happy, you're not hurting anybody, go have your special rocks. People have, people have rabbit's feet. Have a, put a rock on a windowsill in the moonlight and the next day you hold it, you feel less anxiety. You're not hurting anybody, go for it. It's weird times. We all can extract energy from unorthodox sources in this world. If you're, yeah, listen, I, get, I don't do crystals, that's not my thing. I find a balance and a fairness in this world, uh, just an equilibrium, whenever I see an attractive person getting on a Southwest flight last. That's, <laughs> That's when I know that there is some small undercurrent of justice in this world. You know, you, you just, just see a supermodel, just somebody gorgeous, a gorgeous individual, and then you see that C on their boarding card, and you know they have no idea. And you're like, oh, honey, you're about to learn how the world really works. Yeah, you got bumped off a United flight or something, now you're here with the great unwashed. This is gonna be fun. Because they always stand at the front of the plane with nothing but middle seats open. They're just like, I don't, but I can't, but why? But what am I gonna do? You're gonna rub some elbows with some stinkers. That's what you're gonna do. <laughs> Squeeze in here with some slobs coming home from Vegas and make some friends. <laughs> but so we went out there and just did, um, uh, drugs. Uh, I mean, like, it's, but, like, that, but not, I, I don't even want to say it like in a woo, like, do you guys do this? I don't even, just did mushrooms. I just think they're good for you. They're good for you psychologically. I'm doing, yeah, okay. And I'm not, I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to proselytize about it. Do them safely. Do them around people that have done them before that you trust and do them outside. That's all you got. Don't do them in an apartment because you're just like, fucking the toilet, it just has water that goes into the earth, man. <laughs> Anything's a wishing well if you dream big enough, man. <laughs> Is that where my car keys are? <laughs> I'm turning it into a Ferrari. <laughs> so just go, I mean, and, I, and you can have a bad trip, but it's not, I mean, I, I'm not even talking about acid. Just like, I had a bad trip on this one. Not bad, bad, but like, I just... I was with a group of dudes and they, I was outnumbered as far as the soundtrack of the trip went and so they wanted to listen to jam bands and I found a new kind of hell for myself. <laughs> if jam bands are your thing, good for you, bless your heart on that stuff, I do not hear a jam. I never hear a jam, I hear five stepdads who do not know how to end a song. That's what I hear. 
I don't, I don't care what name of the band you tell me it is. It's one band for that names them all. It's called Noodly Lou and the Turd Herders. <laughs> and it's five dads in cargo shorts. And one guy wants to end it. You know, one guy in the band. There's no end to this joke. It just goes on. In being, in being faithful to that genre of music, the joke just goes on until everybody's like, we do have to get out of here. That really, there's no shit on that one. But so, at the end of the weekend, everybody left. And, uh, you know, after we all just sat there frying out, sinking in the sand, everybody left. I was the last one to leave, and my van did the same thing. It sank into the sand. Who would have thought? Big old heavy van and loose sand. <laughs> Wouldn't agree with each other. But I was the last one to go, so I'm just there by myself. I'm like, uh-oh, I'm spinning the tires, and I'm throwing debris under the tires, trying to get traction. I, I wish I was the guy that knew those kind of things. Just, <laughs> oh, this is gonna leverage, you could put some weight on this uh, opposite angle and then the rear differential, that's actually gonna go counterclockwise unless you grab traction. I'm not that guy. I had to look up on the internet what to say for that part of the bit. <laughs> The guy I was like, they're going, but they're not going. It's around, but not forward. I'm just a guy who just is sweaty holding his phone. Like, I, I, uh. Usually there's a lot of answers in this. And I did, I looked at my phone, had fantastic service out there. Go figure, Verizon. Hey, what are you, in the middle of nowhere? Full bars. Hey, you in an actual city where you live and conduct business? Why don't you suck our dicks? So, that's... <laughs> it's an odd choice for them to do that that way. But I had full bar, I'm like, all right. I, I called AAA. I don't know. <laughs> I've been paying them shits for years. <laughs> I think, and I, and I don't call them for the little things. Flat tire, do it myself. Ran out of gas, do it myself. I think I can call, call the big favor on them. So I'm like, all right, now AAA. And they're like, where are you located? I'm like, ha ha. Um, it's, it's out there. Because we weren't even in the part of the, of the national park where there were still rangers. We were just out in the mafia burial ground. <laughs> so I was just like, I, 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 there's not a lot of numbers out here unless you want to count cow skulls. I'll just, I'll drop a pin and we'll see if that works. <laughs> and, and to their credit, dropped a pin within an hour. I saw a little white, Triple A van just bopping along the dirt road that I came in on. Just comes to bring, 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 and I, and I could see, because there's a van, so it's a big windshield, I could see from a distance the guy behind the wheel is just like. <laughs> he pulled, his window is down. The first thing he said, he just goes, I can't do anything. <laughs> and I was like, I know, but. Now you're here. And... <laughs> Two ads, better than one. And so he was pissed, but he's obligated. <laughs> so then we were just hanging out. Two of us were just leaning on his van, looking at my van. <laughs> Neither one of us having any answers. And finally, after a while, he just goes, 
I can call Garrett. <laughs> he gave me no context <laughs> to who Garrett, he just said it, like that's, a, that's how we're gonna do it, we'll call Garrett. He, does Garrett work for AAA too? Maybe Garrett has an independent towing company. Maybe Garrett has a gun and he's gonna come out and he's gonna put a bullet in my head and you guys are gonna split whatever you get for selling my van. And you can tell me that plan now like a super villain cause you know, like, oh, you're gonna die. Let me tell you exactly how. So, but I have no choice but to be optimistic. So I'm like, oh, Garrett, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know him, but that's a strong name. That's a guy who gets something done. Garrett will get it done. I don't know what it is, but he'll do it. I fuck like, Garrett, yeah, and this guy wasn't having my shit. He goes, he's got a 350. And I'm like, oh, man, maybe you can get like a 400? I don't know. <laughs> what are we talking? I don't know. If these numbers are important, can you get more of the numbers? <laughs> like, he's also got a Cummins. I'm like, what's that? I hope that's a Goins. <laughs> he, was, he, wasn't into, he wasn't into the truck humor. He wasn't feeling it. So he shuffled off and uh, he called Garrett. <laughs> and within 20 minutes, this Mad Maxian cloud <laughs> just appeared on the horizon, just, just tearing at us as if born of the setting sun. <laughs> this was the phoenix that was Garrett. And he was coming right at us. Now, you know national parks are very precious about them, and as they should be. They're trying to preserve that shit. But you get there, and they're not screwing around. They're like, stay on the trail. Leave no trace. Pack in what you pack out. Don't look at any of the animals in the face. They can't know you're here. <laughs> Actually, we'd prefer it if you left. That should be the slogan for national parks. Welcome to your national parks. We'd prefer it if you left. You're really only harming this beautiful place. <laughs> Garrett was not adhering to those rules. <laughs> Garrett was a firm believer in the concept that the quickest way between two points was a straight line. <laughs> so he was driving as the crow flies. <laughs> Save for a couple swerves into the namesake shrubs. <laughs> There was a cu couple deliberate moves where I could, Garrett was driving like somebody named Joshua had just fucked his mother. <laughs> and he was taking it out on your tax funded public land. <laughs> There's a couple hard jerks of the wheel where you could tell he's like, just cause your dick's in her doesn't mean I'm calling you dad. <laughs> That's what was tearing at us. And I could see it was a truck. Of course, truck, 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 truck. <laughs> Give me a truck, I want a truck. Taller, taller than that. Taller, Give me another one. Put it on top of that one. <laughs> Ta tall, now wide. Make it a dually. Thick, I want a thick truck. <laughs> I want a truck with sexy hips. <laughs> I want a juicy, curvy truck. I love my curvy truck. Give me a thick, tall, le leggy, curvy truck with a big ass, breedable ass. <laughs> big, wide, breedable ass. Something I can hang on to when we slow dance. Give me a big, <laughs> thick, curvy, but nuts. Put nuts on it, make sure there's nuts. Dangle some nuts. Dangle some little nuts off that fuckable ass. Thick truck, thick, curvy truck with nuts. Yeah, she'll do. She'll do. I got her parked around back, she'll tow it. Don't tell me you don't understand pronouns at that point when you got a big curvy truck with nuts that you call she and her. How can one thing be a they? Look at your truck, dude. <laughs> you fucking, you white trashed yourself into being progressive. You didn't even know. And it was tall, and I get, listen, I get lift kits. I understand that there's some utility to having a lift kit, especially out there. You need ground clearance. But you know that some of these dudes that are getting lift kits, like they're, they're just using altitude to hide from alimony payments. You can tell <laughs> that some of those guys have, you're probably here now. You know what you did. You probably, <laughs> you concocted your own legal loophole where you, you're just like, you can't serve me papers if you can't reach me, dude. That's. <laughs> That's the law. That's just the law. That's the law. <laughs> Do 
just laying flat in the cab whenever baby mamas come around looking for money. <laughs> Fuck, she's still out there, dude. Fuck, oh. What money, Sharice? Look at this exhaust system. I don't have any money. <laughs> so that's what's coming at me. As it gets close, I can see that there's graphics on the truck. He's got graphics. And it's, it's, it's like a graphics, like a wrap. And it's the front of it. That's all I can see so far. It's skulls. Skulls. Yeah, skulls. I get it. Skulls. They're unicorns for dudes. Skulls. <laughs> Now I can see the side, I see that the skull wrap, it gives away, it didn't like fade to the next day. It was like, it was like clawed away. Like, like the bald eagle came and like, you experienced the justice. And then, because then the back half was just, it was all text. It was all like script, whatever font the constitution's written in. I don't know, I don't know what it's called, Patriot Sands or whatever, but that, that was all over the curvy hips of the truck. <laughs> and I'm reading, I'm like, right away, I'm assuming, probably 2A, probably Second Amendment. That's the kind of thing you see on this truck. I'm never really championing the First Amendment. You never see a bumper sticker on a truck like that that's just like, sing your truth. It's never, it's never that. <laughs> it's usually some sort of come and take it type situation. So I'm reading it, but as I'm reading it, I don't see anything about right to bear arms or, you know, defend, I just see uh, shall prevent against illegal search and seizure and personal property and all that stuff. I'm like, that's the Fourth Amendment. <laughs> My man Garrett has his truck wrapped in the Fourth Amendment. And that's when I realized something very specific had happened to Garrett. You don't just cherry pick. You're not just like, I'm an American, pick one, I don't care, wrap it up, dude. Something went wrong with Garrett for him to be like Fourth Amendment for that. He got, I don't, he, he got busted selling reptile eggs on the dark web. But he found a flaw in the warrant and decided that he, he could defend himself in court. That's the best I could come up with. He just showed up and just, you know, say it chill. Like, well, respectfully, Your Honor, okay, uh, the warrant is looking for Bolivian salamanders. And if I could point you to Exhibit A, uh, the evidentiary photographs, and you not see any Bolivian salamander eggs here, do you? I'm not to the untrained eye, but I can tell you that these, these are Honduran geckos. Uh, <laughs> Now that is a similar spotting for any, uh, any uh, uh, people out there that want That's a similar spotting, but these are legal. And I believe uh, the 13 to 18 of the lower uh, uh, the, the states that are stuck together. Um, <laughs> as long as I fill out the proper paperwork at the post office. Ergo, ergo, Your Honor, respectfully, uh, this whole thing should be thrown out. Ergo, <laughs> respectfully. And you can tell she had just had enough. She's like, that's the third time this week, Garrett. No, God damn it. <laughs> $75 fine, and that's what just sent him over the edge. Like, not in my America, hell no. You do not tread on me. I will not be treadeth upon. You're treading on me, I don't want to be treading on. Just fucking wrap the truck. Fourth Amendment, I'm not putting up with this shit no more. Fucking, you do not tread on me. You don't, nobody tread. By the way, by the way, I do have the rattlesnake eggs from the don't tread on me flag, but, um, but hit me up on my hotmail because the feds are monitoring my Yahoo account, all right? I'm still just making up the story. I've not met Garrett yet. <laughs> First impression I have of Garrett were his feet. I saw his feet, because I was on the passenger side. I was eye level with the step rail. <laughs> First thing I saw of Garrett was underneath. I couldn't see in the truck. I could see underneath the truck. I saw two little dangling slip-on Vans tennis shoes. That's what I saw. <laughs> just out there, just looking for the ground. Just, you know. <laughs> and I do not... I, for all the details, I, I do not remember the size of Garrett. I don't remember because all I know is that if you have to exit your vehicle like you're leaving a tree house, you're gonna look like a little fella. <laughs> you're gonna look tinier than you really are. But I kind of liked him right away because he had to take that leap of faith to get out of there. And he did it, I, even without seeing him, I could see it was a good attitude because the way he came down with a real like, ha ha, here's Garrett. <laughs> like a real, like, real ginger outlook on him, I liked it. So he came around the front, uh, and this is the first time now I'm seeing Garrett in his full form. And uh, he had this look, I, you probably know this look out here, it's a very much a West Coast kind of look, I don't know how to describe it, it's, it's like, 
it's kind of like L.A. gangster, but then it's also like white trash kind of dude. Not in a, but like, but like suicidal tendencies meets supercross kind of look. Like, you know, it's it, it, it's like it's the tall socks and the long shorts, but then it's a Monster Energy shirt or some sort of energy drink. And, and, and then, but like the kind of guy that you could tell, even if he only spent one night in jail for a DUI, still like say like, back when I was incarcerated, like they love. <laughs> some about the hard seat incarcerated. Oh man, when I was incarcerated, like you were there for 12 hours. <laughs> and then the face is always too young for that. And, I, and I'm still scared of that look. Whatever age, I don't care. Because even if you're not tough, you're still crazy. You still have like a sleeve tattoos and you do weird flips on motorcycles. I'm not gonna fight you. You know you have butterfly knives that you're clumsy with, but we'll still take them out. <laughs> Fucking what, bro? What? <laughs> Fluria chrome, dude, Fluria chrome. <laughs> and then the neck up, it's always too young of a face. Uh, so it's, a, it's a goatee, but you could tell it's a goatee that they dream that it was bigger. You could tell that. You could tell they asked Jesus for it. They're like mm, at night, just mm, tweak, <laughs> tweak. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and the part that throws me off the most is that there's always a flat brim hat, flat brim ball hat that's way too big. It always looks like a Peanuts character. <laughs> And then they tuck their ears into the side. Do you guys know this look I'm talking about? All right, the ear thing throws me off the most. Because the rest of it, like, all right, kind of a gnarly, you know, desert tweaker, mountain weirdo, I get it. But then the ears in the hat thing is always like, what, now that's like real Rudy vibes that undermine the whole toughness of the rest of it. Cause it's like kind of tough, kind of tough, 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 tough. And then up here, it's just like, coach says once I grow into the uniform, I'm gonna be a real scrapper. <laughs> and that's so confusing. Either way, that's who stood before me. This was Gary. And he didn't waste any time. He goes, that's your van? I'm like, yeah, he's like, fucking sick. And went, he just had chains, 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 got right back into his truck, got in, rolled some coal, pulled me right back onto the dirt road. And, yeah. And that was it, that happened that fast. And I was like, oh shit, this, this is great, I'm saved. What I realized then is that we had not discussed payment yet. Yeah, we didn't go over that part. Now I'm in the desert and I owe a stranger a favor. <laughs> and it's not often that later in life you get to have a new kind of fear. But I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> we didn't talk about money. I don't have cash, and I don't have grass. <laughs> I guess what I have right now is a very open mind. <laughs> but I did have credit cards. And Garrett's like, he's like, 200 bucks. I was like, oh, do you take credit cards? He goes, I'll take your credit cards. <laughs> I, I meant, I meant his payment, not his just strong arm robbery. <laughs> He's like, no, no, I got a square for my phone to swipe. I'm like, of course you do. It's great service out here, of course. <laughs> Full bars, yeah, okay. But he's like 200 bucks. I'm like, there's no way it's gonna be 200 bucks. Just tell me what you're gonna buy when you steal my credit card information. I'll get it for you. I don't wanna reset pin numbers. Just put together an Amazon wish list like a porn star. I owe you, let me hook you up. <laughs> That was it, it was 200 bucks. There's no discrepancies on my credit card statements and he got me out of there. And that's the end of that story and it should be a good end. It's, it, is, it is a good end in theory. Well, the pr reason it's not a good end is because now I can't judge dudes like Garrett anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that suck. at 45 you wanna be like, I'm set in my ways, I got things figured out. Now all of a sudden I can't judge a book by its cover anymore. <laughs> And that's a drag, that's my safe place in this world. That's where I feel comfortable, is walking around thinking I got everybody figured out, and so fuck them. That's how I feel good. <laughs> Look at you, you dress like an asshole. I bet your kids don't love you. Oof, you got a girl pregnant in high school. 
Thank God I'm better than everybody around me. But no, now Garrett has to come along and flip the script on me. And now I got to sit behind those trucks on the highway and think, like, instead of wanting to see him flip over and burst into flames, I'm like, you might be saving an asshole like me from dying in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Godspeed, Garrett. I don't know what to tell you. And it, and it's weird because I, I think the world wants me to learn this lesson. It's a bad character trait to be judgmental like that. And I know that. I'm still that way. Garrett, that was part one of the lesson. I think part two is the fact that at 45, I don't know if it's age or if it's different medications that I'm on now because of my various ailments, I always have some pee in my pants. That's <laughs> just... As sure as rain's wet, I'll tell you. I always... Not enough to go to the doctor, but enough to keep me humble, so I leave it there. I leave it there because I want to be a better person. It's like just a half dollar's worth at all times. I don't want it there. I shake twice, and then I, then I strangle it a little bit. Like it owes me money. Like, we're not gonna do the drip again. Nah, boss man, nah. And as soon as I put it back in my pants, complete betrayal. Just, just a three-lick little cat bath right in the front of my underpants. Like, meow, meow, meow. Just right there on the front, like, ah, yes. Yeah, Cold tip, permanent cold tip. <laughs> so between Garrett and that, I think the universe is trying to keep me in line because I'll still, I'll revert to that kind of way where I'm like, look at this asshole over here. <laughs> Oh, I bet, I bet you got a girl knocked up in high school and then you never <laughs> talked to her again. And then some part of my brain's like, you think he's got some pee in his pants right now? Like, you know what? Probably not. I don't know anything about you. You don't know anything about me. Let's just get on in this world and be okay with each other. During this pandemic, we are seeing things that are unimaginable, right? And as a person of color, I'm seeing things I never thought I would see. I never thought me and two black friends walking into a bank would be told to put on a mask. <laughs> Black people, you get it, right? You want me to put that on and go in there? I never thought I would see that. You know what that's like? That's like two Black people winning the cornhole championship of the world. You see how the Black people didn't laugh? Because they don't know what the hell cornhole is. I never thought a furniture store could be racist during a pandemic. Now, we just celebrated Juneteenth. It's a national holiday. It's on the calendar now, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful situation. Now, if you don't know what it means, it means it's the emancipation of the last black American slaves. Yeah. But one Ikea store, they wanted to celebrate too. This is a true story, look it up when you leave. <laughs> On Juneteenth, they served chicken and watermelon. <laughs> I was just like, y'all, I was mad. I got offended, you know? Because when I got there, they were out of watermelon. I was like, this is fine. I never thought I would almost die from coronavirus. March 17th of last year, I woke up gasping for air. It's so new, less than 100 people died from it. My wife calls 911. The operator has to look it up, a black lady named Teresa. She goes, ooh, it could be COVID. He could be contagious. Then there's a long pause on the phone. Then she says, girl, you better get away from him. <laughs> My wife goes, what I do? She says, put him in the front yard. I'm like, <laughs> like I'm trash? My wife looks at me and goes, you got to go. <laughs> but I'm a man, I'm like, hell no, I'm staying in my house. I ain't going no front yard. So now I'm sitting in the front yard. <laughs> Gasping for air. The ambulance comes, they put oxygen on me. They say, say goodbye to your family. Now, I can't touch my family because I got COVID, right? So my wife is at the front door with my son and a window separates us. They're crying, I'm crying. So I walk up to the window and put my hand on it where my son is, gasping for air. 
My three-year-old son puts his hand on top of my hand, looks at me, and goes, <laughs> This little motherfucker making fun of me, man. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. But the comedian in me was like, his timing's incredible. <laughs> so they put me in an ambulance. Now, if you've never been in an ambulance, it's a scary ride. You don't know what's gonna happen on the other side, right? And they put your neck in a brace, so all you can do is look up. And while I'm looking up at the ceiling, I'm going, you know what? They should put some motivational quotes up here, or something. <laughs> something to put you at ease, you know what I mean? Like, you only live once. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. OJ did it. <laughs> so I get to the hospital. Lots of doctors and nurses waiting on me, and this is when I found out something interesting. The guy that rolled me out of the ambulance was like, you're our first COVID patient. Good luck. <laughs> So they send me into a room. They take every blood test, every x-ray they could, right? Then they leave the room. About 30 minutes later, I see all the doctors in front of my room in a window, right? And they're just talking like <laughs> And then I see them draw straws, and one goes, fuck! <laughs> and that dude walks in. He's scared. He told me less than 100 people died from COVID. So it was new, and he was like nervous, and he goes, well, uh, here's what's happening. Your lungs are filling up with fluid, and you have double pneumonia and corona. So I look at the doctor and go, what's that mean? He goes, well, it's gonna go really good, or really bad. <laughs> and won't know in about two days. And then it start to sink in. I go, whoa, 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 this is serious. I'm gonna make it, right? He looks me straight in the eye and goes, We'll try our best. <laughs> yeah. You always want people to try their best, right? But you never want someone to tell you they're trying their best. You ever drop your car off to a mechanic, pick it up, and you're like, hey, man, did you fix my brakes? And the dude's like, yeah, you know what? We tried our best. <laughs> So they put me in ICU. I'm the only person in ICU. It's new. It's new. Now, this is the only thing I'm going to say about vaccines. I don't care if you're on them or not on them. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your body. But if you're not on them, please do not say, I don't want to get the shot because I don't want to be a guinea pig. You're not a guinea pig. You know how I know this? Because I was a guinea pig. Because <laughs> the doctor walked into my room and went, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> so we got to give you everything. And they did. I was like a whore, and the drugs were like dicks, and I was just taking them all in the mouth. In the ah. Ah. I got gang banged by experimental drugs. <laughs> the first one they gave me, hydroxychloroquine. I had an allergic reaction to it. My temperature shot up to 104.8, almost died that night. But this is the last thing you ever want to hear your doctor say as he leaves the room. He saved my life. He's leaving the room. He looks back at me and goes, man, we learned something new today. <laughs> now, as I'm dying in the hospital, I'm watching TV. And there's a group of people on TV saying it's a hoax. Now, you know what these people look like. I don't have to describe them to you. <laughs> if a Cracker Barrel exploded <laughs> and landed on a Walmart <laughs> and drove off in an F-150, So they were supposed to tell me if I was going to live or die in two days. It took them four days, right? The doctor said, you're doing so well, we're actually going to let you go on the fifth day. 
So on the fifth day, I'm getting ready. I'm putting on all my clothes. All the doctors run into my room and go, no, 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 lay back down, lay back down, lay back down. You can't leave. I go, what's the matter, doc? What's the matter? He goes, oh, man, we just let somebody go home and they died. I was like, shit. <laughs> you can keep me in this bitch forever. I'm not going anywhere, you know? Put me at the front desk. I'll answer phones. I don't care. What was happening is they were letting people go home, they would relapse and couldn't make it back to the hospital. If they did make it back to the hospital, it was too packed and they couldn't take them, right? So they evaluated me for three more days. Now remember, it's still new. So on the eighth day, they're letting me out of the hospital, out of ICU. Doctor looks at me, we're at the exit, me and the doc. He looks at me and goes, hey man, you need to quarantine. I go, how long? He goes, <sighs> uh, hmm. 22 days? <laughs> cool. I'm at home for 22 days quarantine. Let me tell you what my beautiful wife is going through. She's alone. We have a three-year-old son and a two-month-old daughter. So for 22 days, I'm hearing my kids yell, scream. My son's asking where daddy is. My wife is losing her mind. I'm getting breakfast, lunch, and dinner delivered to my room. <laughs> I'm like, damn, COVID ain't that bad. I feel like a husband in the 50s, you know what I mean? I'm like, get those kids away from me, bitch, where's my dinner? But I gotta say, man, I gotta say, to all the doctors, nurses, frontline workers that are here tonight, thank you for what you do. You are the real heroes. Yeah. Yep. So, I became good friends with my doctor, uh, of course, because he saved my life, right? And they test my blood all the time because I was one of the first patients that beat COVID that they didn't put on a ventilator. So the doctor calls me up for a uh, blood test to see if I need a booster or not. And he goes, well, here's your results. If your level is over 20, you don't need a booster. If your level is under 20, you need a booster. I go, all right, doc, what's my level? He goes, your level is 25, 100. <laughs> you have 120 times more antibodies than you need. The highest number I've ever seen during this pandemic is 700, and your level is 2,500. That's right. I hung up the phone, looked at my wife, and said, I'm a goddamn superhero. I'm the half Black Panther. Do you realize I could sneeze on someone and cure them? Shake my hand, sir. <laughs> You're vaccinated. <laughs> Fist bump. Booster! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, I got too cocky after the doctor told me this. I got way too cocky, way too cocky. I was doing everything I wasn't supposed to do. Yeah, I was going out, touching everything. I was opening doors for everybody. <laughs> Did not care. I opened the door for the little old lady. She was like, do you need some hand sanitizer? I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> I am hand sanitizer. <laughs> I lived a life without fear. Everything I was afraid of had no fear of anymore. A cop pulled me over. He was like, do you know why I stopped you? I was like, no, bitch, and just drove off. I was like, what? <laughs> this is what it feels like to be white. What? I didn't do that. Uh-uh, I'm still half black. I ain't doing that to a cop. Oh, hell no. But when you debate your life, when you go back and forth in your life, you don't know if you're gonna live or die. You realize a lot of things, great things that happen in your life and terrible things that happen in your life. And one thing that stood out to me is my parents never told me they loved me till I was 29 years old. And it really messed with me in the hospital, right? So before I get into that story, I gotta tell you about my parents. If you haven't seen my last special, my dad is black, born and raised in Louisiana, has a PhD in nuclear physics and served our country in the army, people. Right.
Now, in the last special, he was 75. Now he's 78, and he hasn't changed. He's still black and has swag. He still walks around the house like this, you know what I mean? And he's always laughing like, yeah, 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 yeah. And always pointing at random shit that's not there. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, my mom, she was born and raised in Korea, South Side. Now we know who doesn't watch the news in this room. <laughs> I said it in my last special blazer. It's tough having an Asian mom because if they think it, they say it, they have no filter. My mom just turned 70 and now all bets are off. She does not care. I never thought my mom could be worse. My mom won't even say people's names to me anymore because she would rather describe them to me. <laughs> she calls me the other day and goes, you know what, I like your friend, he nice. I go, which one? She goes, fat boy, small feet. <laughs> but I knew exactly who she was talking about. <laughs> because with my mom, my mom will say things that make you mad. She will say things that make you want to fight. But my mom feels, really feels that she can say anything to anybody. Because it's a true, it's a true. <laughs> oh, you don't like true? Why are you mad? It's a chill. Do I lie? Do I lie? <laughs> my mom got in a fight with my wife. Now, full transparency, my wife cooks like once every couple of, you know, once a once. <laughs> So my mom walks into our new house and goes, oh, what a beautiful kitchen for no cooking. <laughs> I go, mom, you can't say that in my house. No, -uh, not to my wife. She goes, why? It's a chair, it's a chair. <laughs> you don't like chair? And then to me and my wife, she goes, do I lie? <laughs> do I lie? I look at my dad for help. He's like, walk away, son, walk away. <laughs> My wife, she's white. Ooh, it got quiet, okay. <laughs> but my wife is just not white. She white, white. <laughs> now, I know a lot of people in here are white, and you're questioning yourselves right now, going, am I white, white? <laughs> no. My wife is whiter than you. My wife is from Gillette, Wyoming, white. You hear that? When white people and Timmy like, damn. That's white. But we got a beautiful family, man. We got two kids. My son is now five, my daughter's two. And they're black, white, and Asian. That's right, that's right. We gave birth to pandas. We call them Ling Ling and Sing Sing. And my last special, I talked about this when my son was born, because I didn't have a daughter at that time. When my son was born and the doctor handed me my son. It's crazy as a father, because I knew I would die for him, right? And I don't even know this dude. <laughs> he could be a terrible human being, but I would die for him, you know? But when they handed me my daughter, oh, it was different. I was like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I would kill for you. <laughs> I became a murderer overnight. Because <laughs> the family dynamic to me is crazy. Like, I would die for my son. I would kill for my daughter. But here's what's crazy. I wouldn't kill for my wife. Because <laughs> that's not my job. That's her father's job. I don't want to step on anybody's toes. Because I love both of my kids the same. 
but the love is in different directions. My son, I want him to be able to take care of himself, be strong, but I know for the rest of my life, I'm going to protect my daughter, 100%. And what's the biggest threat to women? Men. Look at that, men. <laughs> so now I hate all men. I became a lesbian activist overnight. <laughs> slash murderer. I'm Ellen DeGeneres with a gun. <laughs> because every man's a threat to my daughter. Every single man eventually will be a threat to my daughter. I hate my son. Sometimes I hate my son. Why? Because he's a threat to my daughter. <laughs> We all have baby cams and watching my kids play. My daughter's playing with her little toy. My son walks over and grabs the toy from her. I get so angry, but then my daughter grabs it back and I'm like, yeah, that's my baby girl. <laughs> right? Don't take no man's crap. <laughs> but then my son looks around to see if anybody's watching. <laughs> Starts backing up where she is and he hits her with his butt. <laughs> and she falls to the ground and starts crying. I get so angry inside. I'm so mad, I wanna fuck this little dude up, right? <laughs> but I can't, he's only five and it's not a fair fight. It's not a fair fight. <laughs> All I can do is scream and like, hey! You better stop that! And he runs off. But my daughter could hit my son with a brick in the face. <laughs> I'd be like, hey girl! Good job, good job. <laughs> Because a daughter it makes you a better man, 100%, 100%. It makes you more empathetic, you care about people, you get sensitive. I cry all the time now, all the time. I don't even know why my wife looks at me in disgust I cry so much. She's like, why are you crying? I'm like, I don't know. I've never seen my dad cry once, but I cry all the time. And then it hit me, every generation of father gets softer and softer and softer. It means things are getting easier. My black grandfather was born in 1902 in America. Went through injustices you couldn't even imagine. My dad went through segregation, still got a PhD in nuclear physics, and had to march, had to march, just to drink out of the same water fountains as everybody else. That's right. Me? I would never drink out of a fountain. That shit's disgusting. <laughs> but my dad, man, I can't take him to the park because he has to drink out of every freaking fountain. I'm like, you fought for this? He's like, I deserve this, son, I deserve it. I tell you, man. I'm going on six years of marriage, man. My, my parents, though, they just celebrated 48 years of marriage. That's something to clap about. So I asked my dad, I said, hey, man, uh, you've been married 48 years. How'd you do it? How do you stay married that long? My dad looks at me and goes, that's simple, son. Never say the first or second thing that pops into your head. <laughs> You always say the third. I go, what's that mean? He goes, well, the first thing, you will get a divorce. The second thing, you are on the couch. But the third thing, happily ever after. I'm six years in, I don't get it, to about a month ago. Me and my wife are driving to Vegas. She packs a cooler of food for our two-year-old daughter. We get to Vegas. My wife opens up the cooler and goes, oh my God, the food all melted. I look in the cooler and notice she didn't put any ice in it. I manned up though, you know, hey baby, you, you, you. you didn't put any ice in the cooler. 
My wife looks at me and goes, you don't need to put ice in a cooler. It's a cooler, duh. <laughs> now, the first thing I thought was, that's the dumbest shit I ever heard in my life. <laughs> but I didn't say the first thing. I didn't say the second thing. I said the third thing. I said, baby, I can't believe this cooler. <laughs> is broken. <laughs> so, I kind of got off course. I was supposed to tell you why my parents never told me they loved me. So when I finally get well, it took me eight months, nine months to get well, right? So I went to my mom and, and dad and go, why didn't you tell me you love me? And I went to my mom first. She goes, well, I'm Korean. So I do not say what is known. I speak by action. <laughs> then I look at my dad and, he, and he's stubborn and black and he goes, well, if your mama ain't saying the shit, I ain't saying the shit either. <laughs> But I got kids, man, I got kids. I tell them I love them every single day, multiple times a day. That's right. Because I don't want my kids to have that same story about me. But, but my parents are now grandparents and they're both over 70. You think they changed for my kids? No, no. I'm talking to my son the other day. He's five, Ramilly, he's only five. I'm like, hey, buddy, you're the best. You are the best. My mom walks by and goes, uh, how you know he the best? <laughs> Much too young to tell. <laughs> Why you keep lying to him? <laughs> it's a true, it's a true. <laughs> this is what I got to deal with, people. But that's the reason why I love my mom. She speaks her mind and she taught me that and that's why I'm a stand-up comedian, because of my mom. That's right, we're truth tellers. That's right, that's right. Because my mom, you know, she was an immigrant. She had me just a year after she moved here, right? There was no internet at that time. She didn't have books or friends to learn how to be a mom. She did her best when my dad worked all day, but now, I'm learning things with my five-year-old son that my mom never taught me. I'm learning nursery rhymes for the first time with my son. Yeah, I just found out Mary didn't have a little ram. <laughs> now, if you don't like that joke, fuck you. My mom deserves that joke. She got so mad when she heard it. She was like, why you say that? I go, well, cause it's a true, it's a true. San Francisco, how we doing? You guys feeling good? I don't know what it is in the water up here, but you guys, maybe it's that free-spirited, open mind, creative mindset that allows people to just fucking drive, just fucking let the wind tell you where to go, man. Just, you can go left and right at the same time if you believe in yourself, Damien. Apparently it's not illegal in this part of the country to cut across four lanes on the freeway with no blinker and exit in one fucking motion. <laughs> yeah. Applauding that behavior, you animals! Yeah, no, I'll take a family of five to get to Bikram Yoga on time. I don't give a shit. Get out of my way, Jorge. I got some day sweats to cash in on. Never seen that move. <laughs> Earlier today, dude, just cut across four lanes and see you later in one move. No blinker and fuck everybody, and that's what I'm doing today. It's like, hey man, you can't be going speeds upwards of 85 miles per hour and make split second decisions like that. Not with lives at stake around you. And plus, what is your GPS doing there? Like, an exit now! It's a cokehead tweaker navigation system. Back, come back, come back, come back! You're like, back, fuck, fuck! Who installed this? God damn it, Toyota. 
You guys go to the beat of your own drum, and I dig that. This part of the country is truly uh, so creative. So many little uh, things you get to, to see, too, that you don't get to see around the rest of the country. Uh, San Francisco is very uh, privy to new experiences, highlights, memories. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this at your airport. Saw this on my way in. Um, in the men's bathroom, little piece of poop in the urinal, just hanging out. <laughs> Never seen that before. Half of you are right to not laugh at that, but also that's concerning that you're just like, man, man, sometimes that happens here. That's keeping it weird 24 seven. That's concerning on many levels, by the way. That, what is that doing there? That's, this is again why you need to go outside. There's still a lot of questions we've yet to answer as a society, okay? A lot of uh, you know, mysteries we've yet to solve. We think we've got the hot button issues taken care of, like, dude, global warming, is it real? Is, is it happening? Are we affected? I'm like, yo, dude, there could be fellas out there who are pooping out of their penises. Let's prioritize the issues. We've got a future to look after, man. What do you do, by the way, if you're at the urinal as a dude and someone comes in, just pulls him down, turns around, do you say something? No, no. You can't. No, you're doing it. Good job. <laughs> I was in Tampa, I got an Uber, right, right out of the gate, the guy was just like, what's going on, man, you good? I was like, yeah, man, just uh, got some shows tonight, appreciate the lift. He's like, oh, hell yeah, man, you going to the strip club? I was like, uh, no, probably not. He goes, oh, shit, come on. I was like, all right, yeah, you know what, fuck it. I, you know, you convinced me. That's a good argument. Let's do it. That's, I didn't actually look at it from that angle. That's a good, come on is a great point. He was real fired up about the strip club. So I had some follow-up questions, naturally. I was like, it seemed like you really loved the strip club, huh? He's like, oh, dude, I fucking, dude, I love I was like, I don't know what that was, man. Was that a yes? Is that what you're trying to convey? He goes, dude, I fucking love the strip club, man. I fucking love the strip club, dog. I love it, man. I was like, what do you love about the strip club? And he looks at me verbatim and goes, oh, dude, I'll tell you, man. Come on, man. The titties, you know what I'm saying? Come on, dude. You know the pussy. Come on, man. And of course, the booty. And I was a little taken aback by his sheer honesty in the uh, middle of a Tampa afternoon. But, uh, but then I was like, fuck, if we were playing stripper family feud, those would probably be the top three answers. He's not wrong. You know? Would have been weird if he was like, the food, the tunes, and the camaraderie. <laughs> Those bitches are friends. It makes the dances better knowing that. <laughs> I don't mind getting pimped out to local activities in a certain city. Right out up here, everyone's like, gotta go to Ghirardelli. Chocolate fat. You wanna see where chocolate was born? You know? <laughs> go to the Ghirardelli chocolate factory. Willy Wonka's jealous of this place. And I like that you guys are prideful about your, uh, your landmarks. Uh, some places I don't understand. I was in Phoenix, Arizona. Everyone was like, dude, you gotta go to the zoo, man. Have you been to the, the Phoenix Zoo? You gotta go, dude, you gotta go to the zoo while you're here, man. The Phoenix Zoo, that's what you do when you're here. You go to the zoo. And I was like, you have one? It's 140 degrees here all the time. What is that experience like for the animals? You just walk by, they're all like, help! <laughs> You're like a homeless guy, you don't have change for you. Like, I'm sorry, I got nothing, I got nothing. They're like, I don't want money, I want Gatorade, motherfucker. I'm melting in my own shit. You're talking to the last bear, potentially. <laughs> Fuck yeah, look at that hat, dude. Nice, did you win that in a raffle earlier? That is a cool ass hat. And I'm obviously deflecting, you know what I'm saying? Like, anytime a dude and you've got the vest to accompany the, uh, the hat. Are you, um, are you always this, uh, is this your normal uh, get up for, or is it set, set the Saturday special? Is that what we're getting? Seven days a week, fuck yeah. You go vest and hat seven days a week? What do you do for work? I don't know why I didn't ask that right out of the gate. You finance dreams and you fix nightmares. I'll take things robots say for a thousand, Alex. Whoa, or some weird spiritual figment of my imagination. Dude, how many times have you said that in public? Because that seemed, that rolled off the tongue. Is that your pickup line at bars to chicks? So, what do you do? You really want to know? I finance dreams and I fix nightmares. Um... I think my friend needs me. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. 
I didn't see you come here with anyone. No, I did, I did. I did, you're wrong, I did. She said she's been in the bathroom. She had to shit. But it was like one of those pee the peas that turned into shit, so she's gonna be there a while. <sighs> but wait, I wanna finance your dreams. Yeah, that's gonna be a no for me. Let me fix your nightmares at least. No, because I'm having it right now. And I feel like me going to the bathroom is a way to get rid of it. Please, please don't follow me in there. <laughs> Try to meet gals, that's always tricky. Guys get in their own heads, right? I'd say 89% of fellows really uh, want to put the best foot forward, make the right impression. We just get jammed up. You know, you girls are sweet and pretty and funny. We get in our own heads, make it tougher than it has to be. Uh, there is, uh, however, another 11% out there that is fucking it up for the rest of us. And you know who you are, you creepy bastards. <laughs> Quit saying weird, pervy-ass shit at the end of the night, okay? Making the rest of us look bad. Throwing Hail Marys on first down. Dude, run a couple plays. Uh, uh, saw the bar was closing. I don't know what you're getting into. You call us, come back to my place and uh, smoke a joint, take a bubble bath. What the fuck are you talking about, <laughs> Alan? Bubble bath? Do you realize how rapey that suggestion is at three in the morning? I just wanted to get clean. That's even weirder, dude. She's an adult. It's tough to be comfortable in your own skin. That's like, that's what we're all striving for. It's just to be able to live in your own skin and be out there and not make shit weird right out of the gate, you know? To go to a party that you got a last minute invite to, you know, not knowing too many of the people there, trying to familiarize yourself right out of the gate, get into a hot tub maybe. You didn't bring swim trunks, you're wearing jeans, right? Everyone's looking at you like, you probably can't get in. You say shit like, carpe diem. Everyone's like, what does that mean? Not really the time for that. You get in with wet pants and you're sitting around like, yeah, but again, we're all friends. And everyone's like, nope, nobody knows you, man. You just got in with jeans, you know? Conversations being discussed, things you're not privy to, but you want to chime in because you felt that silence lingering for too long, so you just go, anybody ever bought a butt plug? Next thing you know, you're getting kicked out of a party with wet jeans. You want to avoid being that guy, you know? So a lot of ways to uh, equalize that for yourself. You know, a lot of people uh, get tattoos to, to feel like their best selves. I'm always uh, envious of uh, you ladies. Your choices are so spot on. Thinking about getting one, because I know that uh, it's one of those things you do in your 30s, right? Just get a, this is, now this is, People know that I'm serious about being a person because I've just, I don't know what I'd get. I feel like I'd get something, uh, you know, that, that nobody has. I would want that. I know I'd be drunk too for the experience to avoid the pain. You know, just maybe just walking all hammered like, <coughs> hey, just, put the, just put the Baskin Robbins logo on my asshole, man. I don't know, fucking, it's a conversation starter, right? Yes, all the flavors. What am I paying you for? You girls are so good with those choices. Girls have so much symbolism with their tattoo selections. It's, I'm so envious. You guys just, you know, just it's, all these have so much symbolism and, and backstory and they very special. They mean something very special to me. Just, I'll tell you what they mean if you really get to know me. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what they mean. <laughs> you were super patient. Um, I actually have a tattoo of two hummingbirds spooning inside of a flower and there's a bunch of Japanese lettering above it and it means uh, live your life to just, you know, live it up. And whatever that means to you, sorry, not sorry. And don't let anyone tell you your dreams aren't achievable. And because if you can see it, you can dream it, you can be it. And if it's not something that you ever thought you could do, then just put on your dream wings and, and just fly up into the sky and go catch your dreams and just uh, hello dreams and grab a big ash and take a bite of your dreams and just make sure that just, fuck, you know, fuck you, dad. You know, just all that's packaged, you know, in one tattoo. You got all that backstory into one little image. <laughs> Always that moment too, right? We've all had that moment where you clean yourself up and think that boozing is gonna be a, a piece of history for you, right? Have that one crazy night and wake up and you're just like, oh, no more drinking for me. Then you take a shower and brush your teeth and you're like, and I'm back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> guys are a little more barbaric with our booze intake than you gals 
We don't learn from our mistakes. We have no restraint. We power through despite whatever debaucherous results are produced. You know what I'm saying? Just like, oh, really? I hit one dude at the Wendy's drive through with my truck. <laughs> one dude. And, and now I'm just supposed to stop drinking Pinot Grigio? It's like, yeah, that's exactly how that works, Kevin. You're not a wine guy is what that means. And you mix it with ecstasy, dum-dum. So you're 0 for 2 tonight. <laughs> Gotta read the room. The girls are way better. I have so much more restraint. Just acknowledgement of just... I know what my body can handle. You know, it's, I can't drink everything <laughs> anymore. <laughs> that was the old me. That was the old Kimberly. <laughs> it's, a, you know, it's a new year. It's a new me. I put that on Facebook. I don't know why you didn't like it, but fuck it. I'm still going to do it. It's my journey. I have to. It's, a, it's just some things I can't drink. I, I want to, though. Like whiskey. I wish I could. I wish I, wish I could. I, I really wish I could. I just <laughs> trust myself on whiskey is what it is. I don't like who I am. I'm a different person. You can ask Siobhan. Remember Cabo and all that? <laughs> don't say anything, bitch. But she remembers what I fucking slut. It's just every drink has a specific behavior for me. That's why it's tough to gauge how I'm going to respond in public. <laughs> like, tequila makes me horny. <laughs> it does. I'm serious. One shot, I'm just like, hey, 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 I'll suck it anywhere. Yeah. Jaeger makes me violent, you know, so you put them together, just lay out. I'll fucking kill you in your sleep and suck your dick and cut it off. I'll have a water. Thank you so much. <laughs> Conversations are way better, though. <laughs> Girls get deep on a level guys can't understand, right? We're just so aggro. We're simple, minded, too. We, that's why we bro out and become friends so easily. Dude's got a, a solid amount of testosterone inside of him. But on the flip side, man, we're ready to meet that testosterone with some, uh, with some kind-hearted feelings, right? But every dude is looking at a dude as like an enemy and a friend in the same fucking like, moment. So it's just like, we're just like, dude, I will fucking hit, hit my dick on your face, but also like, you can fucking take a picture of it. Like, you know, like we just like... <laughs> If you need a new screensaver, I'm there for you, dude. Like, that's why we see guys at bars just fucking like, a shoulder bump. Like, whoa, you all, hey, what's up, man? You, you good? Yeah, dude, real good. What's going on with you? <laughs> Not much, man. Just walking through the bar. Yeah, well, you hit my shoulder, dude. <laughs> oh, sorry, dude. It's fucking free country. Can walk where I want. You know what I'm saying? I got two shoulders. I'm looking to fucking swivel them around town. Yeah, okay, dude. Well, it hurt, man. I had surgery last weekend. Oh, shit, from what? Softball, man. I play professionally. Oh, shit, in like a co-ed league or like just on the... <laughs> Weekends, or is it just like uh, for, for, for fun? Or no, it's for you know, I was trying to go pro for base. Oh, shit. no, that's dope, dude. Yeah, no, I wanted to go pro, but fucking just I was too short. <laughs> I just fucking still wish I could. <laughs> just that's fucking. Do you like the Goo Goo Dolls, man? I got tickets tonight if you want to go. <laughs> I would love that. You girls get deeper, though, right? It's just oh my god, let's just talk about you're much more cognizant, too, of like the group. You know, Beth doesn't know everybody yet. She's, she's new here, so we should get out of town. Get out of our, out of our comfort zones. Go on an, ex an excursion, an expedition. Hey, just go wine tasting. Just, you know, she's had a rough month. Like, her ex-boyfriend didn't wish her happy birthday on Facebook. <laughs> her cat has, like, AIDS or HPV or the flu. It's sick, so... <laughs> I don't know, we should just get out, just learn about her. Just make sure she feels like one of, the, one of us. Like, get to know her passions and her, her fears, right? Girls love talking about fears. What's your, what, what, are you, what are you scared? You're never gonna hear a guy like, yo, Trevor! <laughs> what are you afraid of, dog? <laughs> Come on, dude, talk to me. My heart's open for business. <laughs> you girls just get deep down and connect, you know? I'm envious of that extra layer of, uh, of commitment to, uh, to the conversation, right? Just, oh God, Stacy, I'm so jealous. She has no fears. She's so brave. <laughs> she has literally no fears. <laughs> she has no ears either, but that's, that's actually probably her fear is like growing ears back, you know, and having them burned off in a fire again. <laughs> so, but by the way, don't let her, like, don't let her bring it up. Don't be like, hello, can you, like, all right, can you hear me? Like, let her say, I don't have any ears. Like, let her bring it up. It's... Right, you guys uh, tensed up a little bit uh, more than I would have liked on that joke. Is somebody here tonight without ears that decided to roll the dice and just watch me do comedy? <laughs> Last time I was up here, I went wine tasting for a bachelor party. Yep, that was my response too when it was brought to the table. My buddy was like, dude, we're going wine tasting. I was like, fucking why? <laughs> what happened to Vegas? We're dudes. an enjoyable experience. My one qualm about that uh, <laughs> scenario is the people who pour the wine, these sommeliers. I get that you love 
wine. You're eating, uh, drinking, talking, breathing, sleeping wine 24-7. But uh, hey, man, don't inundate us with so much information. Uh, don't shower us with all these facts. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're day drinking, you know? <laughs> it's 10 a.m. and I am fucked up, Bruce. I don't really care where the grape's birth canal is located. I showed up to your winery already drunk. What does that tell you about how much learning I'm trying to do on a Sunday morning? But you think that, you can't say that, because that's rude and you, you know, it's fun to pretend, it's fun to go along with their spiel, because they get so into it, and it's fun to yes and, and, and take what they say and spin it into your own bullshit, because then you walk out being like, I actually know a lot more about Chardonnay than I thought I did. <laughs> and they get so into it, it's fun to pretend when there's like, if you really, <laughs> if you guys really listen to your palate, <laughs> You can actually hear the grape <laughs> separate from the fruit. And I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't hear it. It's so much fruit, but I can smell it. It's got a little cinnamon toast crunch, a little, fra little fraggle rock, a little apple bees. Is that, the, is that the fruit of the loom? Is that a, is that a fucking nutsack in there? That's, the balls are ripe this year. Vegas is where it's at for a bachelor party. You know, I can only handle Vegas for uh, 24, maybe 48 hours tops. Not willing to uh, throw my life away financially. And you need to be if you're going to stay in Vegas for an extended period of time. Uh, a few uh, games that I enjoy, uh, you know what I'm saying? Roulette is the one I will never touch. And people always get in my way like, dude, you got to play roulette, man. What are you doing? Adam, dude, that's the game of chance, man. You never know what's going to happen when you play roulette, man. You never know what's going to happen when you play roulette, man. Do you know, man, you never know what. Do, do, you, know, do you know what's going to ha happen? You don't know you don't. No, it's fucking roulette, dog. You don't know. I'm like, bullshit. I know exactly what's going to go down. Here's anybody playing roulette ever. Ready? Uh, black. Fuck! Like, that's pretty much every time. You're a failure in two seconds. Congratulations, Carl. Go tell your wife you can't pick colors properly, you piece of shit. That's an attractive quality in a man. Craps is fun. Craps, you can build uh, some cash out of nowhere with a collective group of strangers and have that uh, out of nowhere unexpected energy be built. And we can all use a little more of that right now uh, with what's going on. Just to uh, rally around some strangers and, and just look each other in the eye and be like, dude, we're on the same page. We're, we're winning. We all want money. That's what we're here for. And the superstition level in craps is top notch. Because if you're saying some silly bullshit and you're winning, everyone jumps on board. A lot of people go with the standard, you know, you know, come on, you know, grandma needs a new pair of blue jeans. But, you know, but you can literally, you know, I I don't know why grandma always needs more blue jeans, but she does. Fucking get them for her. If that's what she wants, she's about to die. Fucking hook her up with some uh, Levi's, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes people go with, you know, you know, come on, you know, anything you want. And people, if you're winning, again, you know, just, you know, come on, come on, you know, you know, you know Santa needs a hand job and an Uber, you know, just saying like, whatever you, you know, somebody jerk out Santa, you know. This guy's hard. Sometimes people get a little too revealing with their info at craps. A little too honest, you know, a little too uh, all the uh, eggs in one basket. Just, you know, come on, you know, you know, daddy, daddy needs a new minivan for a second family. You're like, holy shit. All right. Well, that's definitely not the time to reveal that info, Dan. <laughs> I love the fights in Vegas, the drunk public couple fights. If you're a couple and you get shit faced and you start fighting, stay outside. It's free entertainment. Don't be selfish and go inside. No, stay outside for the rest of us to watch. That is... The best programming, money can't buy that. Vegas truly is the best backdrop because, uh, you know, the ambiance, the lights, uh, the up past hours you're not accustomed to. Couples can't handle Vegas. Uh, a lot of them, when they go there for the first time, and Vegas rewards you too. They recognize if you stay up late enough, they're just like, oh shit, it's 4 a.m. and you're still awake? All right, here's Jeff and Diane from Iowa. They're hammered. Enjoy yourself, you know? <laughs> they haven't been here before. It's about to get weird. Last time I was there, my buddy and I sat in the lobby of the New York, New York Casino for a good 45 minutes. Uh, just watching this shit show. He's drunk, she's drunk. Not making any sense, but they somehow understood the drunken babble that was being exchanged. You know, she's just like, You don't say there's any step in the dojo. This motherfucker. Did you stop it again in the dojo? And the dude looks at her, I swear to God, verbatim and goes, Oh, is that, is that, oh, 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 oh. I'm not even paraphrasing. That's what they were fucking saying to each other. It's their own secret language. And at the height of the fight, out of nowhere, the dude does a cartwheel in front of his chick. Just a grown adult male cartwheel. Shit escalated, this motherfucker cartwheels, and at the end of the cartwheel, with a lot of purpose and aggression, looks right at her and goes, boom! <laughs> Yo, boom? Why are you so defensive, bro? Has she been questioning your cartwheeling abilities? No doubt that is a fight that's been brewing all day long. <laughs> 
You know, started the pool, now they're in the cab on the way to the club. She won't let it go. Just You were just such a fucking embarrassment at the pool today, Max. Every 15 minutes, like, ooh, look, look at me. I can whip, whip in the neck. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was trying to make your friends laugh, Carrie. I was trying to make your friends laugh. I thought that was funny. Yeah, well, it fucking wasn't. <laughs> I'm no comedy, motherfucker, okay? And you know what? I didn't want to say anything, but you know what? This is my first time hanging out with Chelsea, and now she thinks you're fucking psycho. So now I have to deal with that on Monday. Thank you for that, you fucking piece of shit. But I didn't want to say it, but it's Vegas. You say what you feel, you speak from the fart, and I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. I don't even think you could do a fucking cartwheel, Max. <laughs> What the fuck did you say to me? <laughs> Gets out of the cab. No, no, is that really, is that really what you, is that really into the club? Is that, oh, it's a, oh, it's a, oh, 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 cartwheel, boom! Dude, 45 minutes, we did not get up. My buddy was going to get a drink. He was like, will you save my seat? I was like, I'll save your seat. I'll change our flights, motherfucker. We're not gonna miss the conclusion. What are you, crazy? I wanna see this divorce live invested too much emotionally. <laughs> Might have to adopt a kid. Don't get violent when you fight. Couples make that mistake. Never ends well. Prime example, Florida. This couple got into it. A chick stabbed her boyfriend in the stomach during the argument because the dude farted on her head. You should be laughing way harder. That is the funniest shit I've heard in my entire life. Google fart stab Florida tonight. If you don't believe me, six pages of entertaining bedtime reading material. That is a power move by that dude. Yo, let's be clear about one thing, San Francisco. You get farted on during a fight, and guess what? You lose that fight. That's a TKO in the first round, baby. God didn't put us on this earth with the proper wherewithal to know how to recover from a fucking head fart. That's a new age shit. That's why she panicked and got violent. She'd never seen that before. Just right there, right there, right there, right there. This dude's been farting on chicks for years, obviously. You don't improvise that move out of nowhere. We just finally met somebody that wasn't gonna take it. She was raised a little differently. At some point in her life, her dad was like, baby, if you get farted on, you fucking attack, you know? And she took that advice to heart. This guy thought he could do his go-to move and get off scot-free. He was like, oh, really? The dishes ain't in the trash? I'll fucking see you in the morning. And she was like, you'll never fart again, motherfucker! <laughs> I talk it out, save your farts. My mom's starting to fart and not realize it. <laughs> God damn it. Almost 70 years old, no butt control. I'm not gonna call her out either. It's good son 101. She made my lunch for 18 plus years. Least I can do, hold my breath, close my eyes. <laughs> Is that a new plant? You know. There's no clue. Just be sitting there hanging out just. <laughs> Did you say something, sweetheart? No, Mom, but I think your asshole wanted to chime in on this conversation. You couldn't feel anything with the smell you just produced? The neighbors moved, Mom. I didn't like them anyway. <laughs> What's that? That one died. Yeah. Now, what about that moment? Felt like you needed to say that. What's that? I'm a mom that's old enough to be your mom. Oh. Great, I used to play the clarinet. Welcome back to Who Gives a Shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I, uh, I appreciate the, uh, the like, you know, commentary after the joke. That's always, look, every comedian, you know, wants that energy between them and the audience. <laughs> that, you know, that recognition that they're paying attention, you know? And I gotta be honest, the way that the laughter kind of slowly dipped down at the end of the joke, I couldn't, I didn't, for me, I was like, that crushed, you know? <laughs> I was like, that's my fucking, I should have closed with that. <laughs> and then here you come, just a hero without a cape. Wait, waiting for your moment. Dead silent. That died. 
And I heard that, and I heard it here too, right? In my comedy heart. And I was like, God, that did die. Why was I so in denial? And then it turns out that, that you also have, a, you're a mom. And so, and you're like, I have a mom that's old enough to, you're, you're a mom, yeah. You said something. I remember being real angry at that moment. So it's a little muddy for me exactly what was. There's a handful of things tonight that would have made me as, a, as, a, as an audience member go, I try to be on my best behavior, you know? It's Saturday, I'm sitting up in the balcony, right? Considered VIP. Uh, they said like, this Adam's recording an album, right? And I think what's cool about you, but also fucked up, is that you heard he's doing an album and you were like, oh hell yeah, another opportunity to crush somebody's dreams. <laughs> and thank God I just met a dream fucking financer. <laughs> so, I'm actually not offended. <laughs> My mom's on Facebook a little bit too much. Any other chronic mom mentors out there? Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Making the world a better place. My mom comments on just about everything that pops up on Facebook. Because she would love to give physical hugs to everybody live in the flesh, but she can't, so she does it via the internet with likes and comments and shares, but she's commenting on shit that doesn't need additional commentary. Yeah, usually pictures of food, because that's what her friends also in their 60s are chronically posting, because they don't know what to use Facebook for either, you know? So they're just like, I bet these youngsters forgot what pictures their fucking casserole look like. <laughs> Noodle salad Monday through Friday from Barb and Kathy Scheibitz. And my mom comments on every photo. She's consistent. I'll give her that. A picture will just pop up. She's like, yum. <laughs> yeah, okay. You probably just think that, mom. You don't have to put that down on the keyboard, you know? <laughs> Internalize that emotion. Sometimes she just says what the food is. Lasagna. It's not a fucking game show, mom. You don't have to guess the food picture. People know what that is. When somebody likes her comment, she comments below the like. I don't know you like lasagna, Debbie. We should make it together. <laughs> I'm sitting there high as balls chiming in. Let me know when you make it, I'll fly up, I'm fucked up. <laughs> I am at the airport awaiting your lasagna call. <laughs> we have stupid fights, my mom and I. Got into a fight about whether it's pronounced Fanta or Fanta. <laughs> yeah. On the phone, she was like, do you remember my friend, uh, my friend Diane? No. Oh, her, her daughter had a miscarriage last weekend. Oh shit. Hey mom, remember when I said I don't remember who Diane is? <laughs> I thought I kind of squashed that. <laughs> What's the weather like in LA? Well, you know, 75, 80, every day, hot as balls, you know that. Ah, oh, that's great. You gonna wear shorts? I don't really feel like answering that, mom. <laughs> well, send me a picture if you do. Nope, definitely not. <laughs> and I was like, mom, I haven't had a, a Fanta in a while. And she goes, it's Fanta. I was like, what'd you say, bitch? It's Fanta. I go, no, mom, it's Fanta. The jingle in the commercial goes, don't you want to want a Fanta? She goes, no, no, it's Fanta. Don't you want to want a Fanta? <laughs> An adorable rendition for sure, but also incorrect. I was firm in my beverage jingle knowledge. I'm like, mom, it's fucking Fanta. I'm right, you're wrong. I'm sorry, that's just the matter uh, of facts about this moment. And she's like, okay, you know what? Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess, you know, yeah, I guess you're right and I'm wrong. What do I know? What do I know? You know everything and I don't know shit. Yeah, here I am, wrong again. And then she said something I've never heard before in the history of our relationship, to squash any debate. She goes, yeah, yeah, what do I know? What do I know? You just came out of me. <laughs> I mean, that is the ultimate mic drop. <laughs> for any discrepancy. Like, you just came out of me. If she were a Mortal Kombat character, that would be her finishing move. Do you understand? Just childbirth. Like, you can't come back from that. Only works if you're a mom, obviously. Not as effective if you're a dad. Oh, really? I don't know what I'm talking about, son. Yeah, no, what do I know? You just came out of me and then went into your mom and then came out of your mom, I think. I don't know, maybe the butt. I don't know how it works. You might be a butt baby. Google it. <laughs> I have to use Facebook for so much uh, promotions. Uh, 
Facebook is, is big for the promotional uh, part of this job, but uh, it's also great for connecting. Let's be honest, that's what we all use it for. So many people I've found and uh, rediscovered from my past. I went to elementary school with a girl named Audrey Clitgard, and I forgot about that shit. Um, yeah, K-L-I-T-G-A-R-D. What a home run day that was. I was just like, <laughs> and I got to have that again, you know? I got to go take a trip down Clitgard Lane for a minute, you know? And, Remember, rem remember a better time when the economy was strong and Audrey Clickard. How does that happen, by the way? Were the options limited at Ellis Island that day? <laughs> All right, sir, you can either have <laughs> Dick Sponge, Ass Tickler, or Clickard. Oh, fucking Clickard's probably going to get the least amount of teasing. Found out one of my friends got divorced on Facebook. That was a new one. Usually Facebook is a place to celebrate the highs. Like, this is all the great stuff. It's the life. I'm just look at how great things are. But now it's like, then this is happening too. <laughs> I want everyone to see it. And I love that. I love taking ownership of, of uh, moments like this and turning them into celebratory experiences. And she did. It was a picture of her uh, and about 15 of her girlfriends in front of a barn with balloons spelling out the, the words divorced as fuck, right? <laughs> Uh, all flicking off the camera in unison, just like, fuck you, Steve, <laughs> right? And uh, a lot of hashtags to accompany the picture, just hashtag next chapter, hashtag doing it my way this time, hashtag Emily summer of fun, hashtag gonna find me a new man, hashtag someone help me find me a new man, you know? <laughs> hashtag please, you know? I knew, I knew it was gonna work out. Sometimes you meet a couple and you're just like, nope, <laughs> not gonna work. Thanks for playing. You know, they were just two different, you know, opposites. And people always try to come at me with like, well, dude, you know, opposites attract. I'm like, yeah, and sometimes opposites are fucking opposites. <laughs> and they weren't meant to be. And it takes a minute to figure that out. This dude was so roided out. And not that roided out fellas can't find love and happiness. He just had too much juice running through his system. You couldn't have a normal combo with him. You'd be like, dude, Troy, how was your weekend? He was like, <laughs> I'm like, did you just put a curse on my fucking family, dude? What was that? Am I gonna sleep tonight? Why can't you talk normally in public? Everyone commented below too, divorced, no, what happened, why, what, what happened, no, why, what, why? I'm like, why? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say she asked him to put the toilet seat down and he tried to throw the fridge at her head, you know what I'm saying? Like that's a deal breaker in most relationships. I like to smoke uh, blunts, joints, right? Makes me feel like Snoop Dogg. Can't do edibles anymore, swore those off. Last time I had uh, an edible, I had three pop brownies, went to Disneyland, and convinced Winnie the Pooh to break character so that he could take me to a first aid station <laughs> because I was having a panic attack. <laughs> yeah, true story. Hey, public freak out in your 30s, table for one. I can only imagine what it looked like to ongoing children. First time at Disneyland, just seeing a grown man flexing on poo in broad daylight. Like, you gotta help me, man. My heart's gonna pop out of my fucking chest. <laughs> Losing my mind. Very, I was terrified on, uh, on many levels. And then I started getting flooded with all these flashbacks. Because then I remembered, oh shit, my folks took my sister and I to Disneyland when we were six for like a save the marriage trip, right? And, uh, yeah, spoiler alert, didn't work. And, uh... But I remembered getting lost that day at six and, uh, and getting the, uh, the, uh, the, the sweet help from Winnie the Pooh again, who I'm now facing down with 30 years later. So I'm just like, dude, Pooh, you helped me 30 years ago. Now you're gonna bail on me when I'm having a fucking heart attack? And this motherfucker in the suit, which I know was not a real guy, because I played Wolverine at Universal Studios. So I'm like, you know, which you know, shouldn't be the only reason you know that somebody's not the real Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I used to play a character too. I know you're probably Kevin from Detroit in there, you know? But I was like, dude, break the fourth wall. I need some fucking help. And this guy would not break the character code of conduct. He looked right at me and was like, like I don't know what to tell you. That's Christopher Robin, you know? <laughs> so now I'm freaking out. And, uh, and people have seen me freak out. So then you get extra self-conscious, right? Pooh walks away, and then you have to just like stand there by yourself, like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, you know? People are like, you cool? You're like, you, are you cool? <laughs> then I had to break away uh, and get indoors. So I went to Splash Mountain. Not before I was reunited, yeah, not before I was reunited 
with my buddy who I went to the park with. We had gotten separated, right? So I was lost for a second time. Again, freaking out. We just poo to come to my rescue. We fucking failed on that mission. And then I see my buddy. It was like we were, you know, like remember at the end of Titanic when people were like, saw each other, they're like, I thought you drowned. Like that's how it was. <laughs> When I saw him, I was like, I thought you were dead. He's like, where the fuck were you? I was like, I fucking got a pizza and then I found poo and I just, I'm free. I had a heart attack in front of a kid. It's a long story, you know? <laughs> and then we got on Splash Mountain and uh, we started to chill out for a little bit because, you know, there's some, uh, some tranquil moments. You know, you sit around, you just, you know, get in a log. You just kind of coast down a river, right? <laughs> Zip-ba-dee-doo-down, zip ba dee hey. Right, we start singing along. We're like, we're fucking bad. Thank God we didn't die today, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, and then panic started to resettle in when all these robotic animals started popping out of nowhere every 12 to 16 seconds. Hey, Walt, too many animatronics is my one piece of feedback. Every, just fucking, just all these animals just, me, 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 maybe I'm real. Right, just staring at you. <laughs> staring at you way too long into your soul. I knew we were too big because at the top of Splash Mountain was an owl and he looks right at my buddy and he goes, me, me, whoo. <laughs> And my buddy starts nudging me. He's like, dude, Adam, that owl just called you a Jew. We got to get out of here. This place is haunted, man. How do you know? <laughs> that was cool. I'll give you that. Because, man, I've had some insane nightmares. <laughs> I still fuck with NyQuil. I don't know why. Probably because the uh, slogan, commercial, they make it seem so carefree. You know, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine. You're like, oh, that sounds great. I'd love to rest. And Nyquil's like, yeah, you can definitely rest after you hallucinate for 45 minutes. <laughs> Get ready to see your dead grandpa on a seesaw in France. <laughs> Nyquil. <laughs> Hawaii is the best place to smoke pot, man. Hawaii exudes the vibes of pot just 24-7. Look at any beach bar, blasting out the tunes of Jack Johnson. I don't know if Jack Johnson is like the state bird in fucking Hawaii, but they respect his tunes so... Every beach bar, just, you know. And you're not paying attention to uh, the lyrics that JJ is stringing together. And you should, because he uh, is brilliant at uh, just wrapping together these, you know, these lyrics that have no business being partnered together. But, you know, you're tapping your toe to all of his melodies, so you never give an ounce of doubt to what he's singing about. He's just like, I got the beach pancakes at my feet I watch the waves all day as they crash on the street all right well that is catchy but that's a tsunami that you're singing about Jack so maybe a little more concern in your voice children are drowning in front of you while you're harmonizing to yourself <laughs> I do like to watch tv when I'm a little stoned obviously that's uh it's the best time to do it I'm partial to chop junior if you like child abuse and food. That is the show for you. God damn, the verbal critique that these adults have the audacity to throw at these children. 11, 12, they can't even tie their shoes or do cursive, yet they're taking in all this fucking, just absorbing all this fucking emotional wear and tear. I did, you know, and they don't know. They don't know how to stick up for themselves. It's like, I tried really hard, and um, I, think, I, you know, I think it was pretty good. My mom said she liked it. And the judge is like, yeah, well, Caleb, I found your lemon bolognese to be weak, like your kickball skills. And yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I always get picked last. You're right. <laughs> Stephanie, your tuna tartare was flat, like your chest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm tense. All right? I'll get tense next time. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Everyone smokes pot. My 15-year-old cousin just found out he smokes weed. 15 years old. Tried to help curb the habit. I was like, dude, it doesn't have to become an issue. You know, I smoke a little. His eyes lit up. Never seen a kid more excited in my entire life. Adam, you smoke pot? <laughs> dude, how have we not smoked together yet? What are you talking about? Five years ago, you were 10. What the fuck are you talking about, man? I mean, how have we not? You just started using deodorant, man. You gotta build up to that. Plus, I have a rule. I can't smoke weed with anybody who didn't grow up watching DuckTales. That's just a rule I have. There's a generation gap, you know what I'm saying? DuckTales. Yeah, see, they're the potheads. That's how you find them. I knew you were in here. You had no clue that was coming, and you dropped everything that was happening with you in that moment. Just a fucking woo-woo. Woo! Yeah, I love that show, dude. Give me a heads up next time. You could see someone stabbing someone outside a Whole Foods parking lot, like, eh, chicken apple sausages are way too expensive. Just walk by, Dugtails, eh, woo, eh, back to stabbing. I'll stop for the woo-woo. <laughs> I 
I'm an impulse buyer though, you know? I see the, the slogan just like, this will help. And I'm like, I want it, you know? I bought a my pillow. Just, uh, again, impulse buyer. I, I, got, <laughs> I got turned on from the, the whole commercial. If you don't know the my pillow story, by the way, fascinating. Mike Lindell, former crackhead, okay? Um, used to sleep on feet under freeways, cleaned himself up, made the my pillow, boom, billionaire. Inspiring story. Tugs at the heartstrings. Makes you uh, want to be a part of that situation. And again, the commercial does its job, overhypes the product, makes you feel like you're not living properly without it. Just some guy on the sidewalk, you know, no pillow, just trying to get comfy on the street, just fucking, you know, having a tough time getting those restful Z's. He's like, Ugh, it's just not that soft. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a curb, dum-dum, go inside. You know, what the fuck are you doing? And then they cut to Lindell, he's like, that's why you need, need a fucking my pillow. <laughs> you know, and he's just muppeting out hardcore on TV. He's still dealing with some crack after effects. Just kiss the freaking pillow, right? <laughs> and I did, you know? And uh, it was the worst fucking thing I've ever slept on. <laughs> Obviously. I should have known that going in. Who takes relaxation tips from a fucking crackhead? <laughs> this guy used to think the alphabet started with That's not a guy you listen to for sleeping advice. Got to play in the uh, NBA Celebrity All-Star Game a couple weeks ago. Yeah. What? That is the right response. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you sound like most of Twitter. I got blown up by so many rappers I've never heard of. Who the fuck is Adam Ray? I was like, good to hear from you, amigos. <laughs> Thanks for the shout out, Tony Braxton. Or... <laughs> Tony Braxton, clearly I don't know any more rappers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> rap legend, Tony Braxton. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I want to be in the NBA. So what do you do right now? Advertising. Advertising. Hell yeah. Was that the dream as a kid? Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> what kind of advertising do you do? Oh, nice. Oh, dude, that's got to... Do you write jingles? Uh, I don't write it. I sell them. You sell the jingles. So people come to you and they're basically like... Give me a break, give me a break, break me out my bitch and ain't kick can't buy. And you're like, fuck no. <laughs> or, I love it. Can we get another verse in there? How about give me a break break, right? Do you ever give advice or do you just say yes or no to the, to the given jingle? Fuck yeah. Any uh, famous jingles we might have heard of? Uh, Hammer Helper. Fuck yeah. So I'll ask the question again. Any famous jingles we've heard of? <laughs> Hamburger Helper, what is it, 1992? Was that the year that Helper was on top of the world? What is the Hamburger Helper slogan? Refresh our memories. When you need a helping hand. When you need a helping hand. Walked right into that shit. Why are they always so sexual? Or maybe I'm just a dude. And my brain just goes to sex. Helping hand, oh, like a fucking, like a second, like a hand, a fucking touch your wiener. <laughs> like a wiener hand. <laughs> I remember Corn Nuts had a real, uh, Corn Nuts was like, <laughs> isn't it like bust a nut, bust a nut. Come on everybody and bust a nut. I know I'm not too far off. I will Google that. <laughs> yeah, certain slogans. I mean, look at the lottery. You know, that slogan, that's, you know, that's what a winning formula. Just, it could be you. <laughs> Dum-dums hear that on the other end of the TV and they're like, I never thought of it like that before. Even when the odds are one in seven billion, people are like, dude, I'll fucking roll the dice. <laughs> one in seven billion. <laughs> Those are insane odds. You've got a better chance of like Oprah, like, you know, pulling up to your house and being like, and you're like, oh my God, Oprah, did I win something? And she's like, no, no, I got a fucking shit. <laughs> Oh, um, I guess, yeah, come in, I guess, wow. I, this is not how it usually plays out on TV, but, um, yeah, no, just don't use the first one, it's broken. 
Oh shit, Oprah, it's broken. She's in there. Corn nuts jingle. Here it is, bust a nut. Ready? They better sponsor this fucking album. Go to your room and lock the door? I don't remember that part. Don't tell your mom, hide the pawns. Ask your stepdad for some cash. <laughs> don't let your sister see that video of you letting the dog lick your butt. Bust a nut. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> what? I would be so starstruck if you were like, that's actually my song. 15 hours in the studio coming up with that. Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to be in the NBA when I was uh, a kid. My, my mom actually squashed that dream at nine. She's like, Adam, the NBA, but sweetheart, th but there are no Jews in the NBA. <laughs> Good luck with that, you dumb, dumb. Happy birthday, go to bed. Just a power slam of honesty at nine. I ain't even at double digits, already putting a kibosh on the fantasy, which seemed uh, fucked up from my perspective. And then I grow up and become an adult, and I'm like, oh, she was right. There are no Jews in the NBA. Bummer, but the harsh reality of the situation. You've never turned on any NBA game and seen Kevin Durant leafing through a Torah at halftime. Uh, no sweaty yarmulkes are flopping onto the court. No commentator during any NBA game has ever been like, Rosenbaum for three! <laughs> What a shot. Weinstein at the line for two free throws. You know how he loves those. He really take his time with this shot. He doesn't have to pay for it. <laughs> I was good too, man. I probably peaked in the sixth grade. I had excellent court vision. A sweet jumper. I was a little fatty though. I was a little fat fuck. But I was quick fat, you know. Quick fat is a term that I came up with that basically explains why every 10, 20, 45 years there comes along a fat kid that just, you know, defies the laws of gravity. I was uh, just as swift as all the skinny kids. I just smelled like Pop-Tarts and mac and cheese when I sweat, you know? My coach was like, you're the most delicious defender of all time. He called me Krispy Kreme Abdul-Jabbar. That's not a healthy nickname. <laughs> There's a problem. NBA is my favorite sport, though. Man, they got... Uh, they got so much uh, extra stimulation. You know, they recognize you need more than just the game in front of you to keep you entertained. Kiss Cam, that's one of the greatest forms of free entertainment this country has ever come up with. Are you kidding me? Like, it's, there's something for everybody. They span the gamut. Every age range is covered. They'll start off slow with a couple in like their 80s or 90s, and as soon as they put them up on the Jumbotron, everyone just, you know, applauds, just like, holy shit, how did you, you know, get outside, you know? And, uh, <laughs> right, and then the, uh, the old gal's like, give me a smooch, and he's like, who are you? Like, <laughs> And then they'll cut to a couple, uh, you know, prepubescent, seventh, eighth grade, and this little too cool for school punk ass kid isn't ready to show publicly the amount of affection he's got for the girl he brought, right? So he's just like, uh, 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 right? Yeah, real inappropriate. Then they'll cut away to a couple that has no business kissing whatsoever. And that's my favorite, usually like a uh, brother sister combination. <laughs> Yeah, and they can't defend themselves because they're muted on the Jumbotron. So they're just like, oh, no, no, we're related. We can't do this. And the whole stadium's like, we don't give a shit. We paid for this incest. Act like you grew up together. <laughs> I like to sing the national anthem at a, uh, an NBA game. That's on the bucket list for sure. And once Fergie did it, I was like, I think I could fucking do it. <laughs> That is pretty much how I would do it. You know what I'm saying? Just make a bold choice. Just People gotta stop putting spins on things that don't need adjusting. You know what I'm saying? Nobody was out there like, you know what we could use from Fergie? A new national anthem. <laughs> that version would have been acceptable if they were like, please welcome to sing the national anthem, Popeye. You know, then I would have been like, yeah. I knew this guy was working on something special. That's why we haven't seen him for a couple beats. She was two verses away from being like, and eating a can of spinach in front of America. I sort of put spinach back on the map. You gotta get somebody reliable, man. Some true rock star. Lionel Richie comes to mind. That's my karaoke go-to. That guy did no wrong. Look at any video of Lionel's from the 80s. He pushed the envelope because it, you know, he, he, he backed up the hype that people built around him. And if you were that cool, man, you could really do no wrong. Your behavior was not questioned. Look at any video. Look at the video for Hello tonight on YouTube. Just, hello. 
Is it me you're looking for? You know what he's doing in that video while he's singing? Chasing a blind woman around. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that is the epitome of narcissism. Do you understand? She's blind. She doesn't know what the fuck's going on. And Lionel's just like, is it me you're looking for? It's like, yo, dude, probably not. <laughs> Hate to burst your bubble. She just paid for soup with a napkin. You think love is at the top of her list? <laughs> She's looking for a door handle to get some stability, man. Cut her some slack. <laughs> Concerts too, man, the best. Went to Bonnaroo. Bonnaroo is one of those experiences as a comedian you could do, and uh, it's a giant music comedy festival. Got to see Pearl Jam for the first time. If you haven't seen Pearl Jam live, put that on the uh, bucket list. Holy shit, PJ rips it up, you know. And you know they, that they're a great band because they've been featured on VH1 Storytellers. And that show only highlights musicians and bands that are worthy of uh, having journeys and, and stories to tell that are attached to the tunes they're about to play. Everyone's done it. Bowie, Alanis Morissette, uh, holy shit, man. Yeah, um, uh, uh, REM, uh, Pearl Jam, obviously. Uh, Taylor Swift did an episode, was the last one. The youngest, right? When she was like 22, it's like she's 22. She hasn't lived a full life worthy of experiences worth connecting over. But God bless her, she's up there powering through. Like this next song is about. Um, okay, so you guys know that guy you had a crush on in high school, right? We're all we're all thinking of him right now, like Devin or Revan or Stevan, like the weird new kid. And he didn't know you had a crush on him. And your friend Kelly told him you had a crush on him. And you were like, Kelly, what are you doing? That was private information, bitch. <laughs> and so you go to school the next day and you see him in the hallway and he gives you a weird look, like, uh, 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 and you're like, what the fuck was that? I didn't, what was that look? And I'm just like, I don't know, Taylor. What the, where's this story fucking going? This is just, there's no beginning, middle or end. 25 years ago, Eddie Vedder and Pearl Jam, much more engaging tales. He's up there like, this next song is about, um, this next time, uh, well, one time the band and I, we were doing a show in Wisconsin, and uh, after the show we went to an IHOP where we found ecstasy in our banana pancakes. <laughs> we took them, obviously, we started tripping our balls off. We wandered into a forest where we met a magical elf who'd been separated from his family. <laughs> we helped him how to re rebuild his home out of pine cones. And he taught us how to make shoes out of the wind. Then we heard a van driving by from a nearby town screaming at us, Mr. Vetta, Mr. Vetta, oh my God, thank you so much, you found our baby. <laughs> Turns out that elf we were kicking it with was, uh, <laughs> was actually a fucking baby. We were fucked up. Anyway, we didn't know. His name was Jeremy. Two, three, four. <laughs> Way better story. Just gotta read the room, you know? A lot of us uh, fail to read the room, not know what to say. Or you don't say what you should say at the right time. We don't act the way you should. Um, look, Matt Lauer thought he could give out dildos for Christmas last year. And <laughs> that is a prime example of not reading the room, you know? I get you want to be the cool guy at the office. You've been there 30 plus years. You know, you're just like, hey, no one's giving out dildos for the holidays. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason for that, dude. Now you're on the front page. So that plan clearly backfired, you know? And look, give out dildos. I got no problem with that. No harm, no foul. Just leave them outside of the door and then disappear. Just be like, hey, who's the cool guy giving out dildos this year? And just, you know, I hope we figure it out. Seems like a fun guy to be around. It's gotta be inconspicuous with your dildo drop-off, you know? Secret Santa, that shit. He added notes. That's what made it weird. Got too specific. He was like, happy holidays. I hope it fits. Matt. It's like, dude, you can't write that. I don't know why you put, I hope it fits. Yeah, just let me know. Let me know. Or don't, you know, I'll just check in. <laughs> My nieces fail to read the room a lot, but uh, they're nine. They shouldn't have to uh, have any sort of filter. That's, that's, that's one of the benefits of being nine years old and being a twin, as they are. You just get to say whatever you want and not be cognizant that there are feelings at stake when you say shit to adults, you know? They're just like, I'm just gonna think it and then I'm gonna fucking say it. And I don't really care how it affects you because I'm nine and there's not much I have to do in my day other than say shit that might be offensive or uh, hurtful to your heart, you know what I'm saying? It's a cool place to be at nine. Just fucking here it is and fucking here it comes. <laughs> And they do that all the time. It was dead silent in the car, uh, driving them to swing practice, and one of them just goes, Uncle Adam? And I go, yeah, what's going down? She goes, I'm, I'm sorry you don't have a wife yet. <laughs> I was like, aw, <laughs> mind your fucking business. <laughs> what the hell, I thought we were on the same team. I don't tell you how to color, stay in your lane, fuck. <laughs> I saw you make a tree purple last week. I didn't say shit. You think that's gonna come back to bite you? Any other uncles out there just uh, doing their best job to make these kids feel like you should be their parents? 
You guys want three Slurpees at 7 p.m.? <laughs> yeah, you're the coolest. I know. See ya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Try to go to bed. <laughs> they take advantage of that blind support, though, man. Jesus Christ. They manipulate, press your buttons, got little catchphrases, they tug at the heartstrings. I thought you were cool. Oh, man, that hurts so bad, because all you want to do is be cool to them. And now they're telling you, well, fucking maybe you're not, you know? <laughs> Starts off slow. Can we have our iPads this weekend? No, your mom said you can't. <laughs> I thought you were cool. I'm just like, fuck that shit, I am. Who told you that? <laughs> Where are you getting your facts from? <laughs> it's only going to get worse as they get older. Uncle Adam, will you buy us beer? No. <laughs> I thought you were cool. All right, you know what? Fuck the beer. Let's do shots, all right? Who's partying tonight? <laughs> Want a four loco, chase it with a plan B? Let's hit that monkey bar, all right? You're driving, by the way. I don't care if you're nine. Figure it out. You wanted this. They're cool. I'll do anything for them, you know? Because they, again, they respect me, and that can be good cop, bad cop. They love what I do. They start to recognize that stand-up is a job, more or less, and they pitch me jokes. It's insane, right? It's just so cute, like, and they're different personalities. One of them is a little more, I can just, you know, bouncing off the wall. She's got a more creative uh, imagination. And she was like, Uncle Adam, I got a joke for you. What did the poop say to the fart? I'm just like, I don't know. She's like, gross. I'm like, yeah, hilarious. Not bringing it to San Fran, but I, I get why that's funny. The other one's a little more cerebral, a little more uh, image driven. Uncle Adam, what's a, what's a taco's favorite dance? I don't know. That's awesome. Yeah, fucking jackpot. Probably closing with that. And then uh, the other one felt outdone. So she's like, I got another joke. I was like, ooh, all right. Yeah, let's go back and forth. What do you got? Okay, what the boyfriend say to that girlfriend? Ooh, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know, what? Um, nothing, because the boyfriend saw the girlfriend when they're at dinner, like a, a picture of her ex on Instagram. And he was like, what was that? And she was like, I don't, what do you mean? And he's like, I just saw you like uh, Steve's picture and I didn't know you were still talking to him. And she was like, yeah, he's, I told you, we reconnected because he got sick. And so I'm trying to show emotional support because he just got done with his second round of chemo. And I thought that was like a, a, a chivalrous move on my part was to reach out and be like, I hope everything's going well. It, does, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Get it? <laughs> there we go. It was, um, that was topical. <laughs> They're cool. I'll do anything for my nieces. Anything. So much unconditional love. Their friends, not so much. Pretty much hate all their friends. They got just several seven, eight, nine year old just spazzy bastards surrounding them at the park. Kids that just pop out of bushes. You know, I've definitely uh, established myself as the cool uncle. All the other parents are on the outskirts, just on their phones, just fucking, you know. These kids take advantage, popping out of bushes. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Made you look. Yeah, you did, Nathan. I wasn't expecting a headbutt in the middle of the day. <laughs> Fuck off. Nathan, Caleb, Gary. They got a friend named Gary who's eight. Yo, if you're Gary and you're eight, you better figure that shit out real quick. Why do you not work in a body shop already, Gary? You're still in grade school? Get to work, man. <laughs> Always smells like soup for some reason. Look, you're eight, dude. You got one job. Do a chowder check before you leave the house. Why do you always smell like you've just been dipped in something? He's like, I like broccoli cheddar. Yeah, dude. It's fucking all over your ears. Like, always taunts me with his bullshit skills. Hey, Adam, I bet I can skip, I bet I, I bet I can skip rocks better than you. I bet you can, Gary. You don't do shit all day, man. You got plenty of time to hone your skipping skills, man. Even his haircut sucks. To me, that is a strong indication that you are a piece of shit as a youngster. Even the barber got a sense of Gary's energy. It was like, boom, boom, fuck this kid. He sucks. And I went his head to reflect that. I hate this kid. I want to throw his backpack in the ocean. Got a midget best friend. It's pretty close to having a kid. Fuck yeah. Brad Williams, great comedian. Do a podcast called About Last Night, which you guys should check out. Brad is uh, the shit. Definitely uh, a cool addition to my friendship circle, having an LP in there. Um, if you don't have a midget best friend in your life, uh, definitely pick one up for the holiday season next year. It's street cred. People don't fuck with you. 
Don't steal one. That's, you know, illegal and seven years bad luck. But uh, so many things I got to learn about the LP community that I didn't know about Brad until I met him. I didn't know that little people could drive. You know what I'm saying? Did you know that they could drive? I didn't know that they could drive. Uh, two months into hanging out, Brad and I are leaving a comedy club. He's like, hey man, you want a ride? I was like, on your dragon? What the <laughs> fuck? What? What? It's not gonna be a car. He actually drives a Mini Cooper. I don't know if it's for the joke, but it definitely fills my heart when I see him get into it. I saw him and his now wife having sex at a house party. But yeah, definitely not something I anticipated on seeing. Uh, and also something I was not going to turn away from. <laughs> Thank you, God, that is a free gift. It's like a lunar eclipse, you know? Happens once a year, you mark it on the calendar, take notes, report to the others. So they can prepare emotionally, because it's a lot of imagery to take in, you know? You're at a house, you're not like, you're not, you're not expecting like, I hope there are midget folks at some point, you know? And I was drunk and I was, I was meandering around on my own. I was too drunk to be there. You ever been so hammered and you can't recognize for yourself that it's time to go? Because you don't want to miss out on whatever fun pops up, you know? So I just wanted to stay close, but I was, you know, I was like bumping into the fridge. I was like, fucking, what's up, fridge? You know? Like, all right, probably time to go take a nap. You know, I'm flexing on fridges and shit. And then all of a sudden, I ended up upstairs by myself. And I didn't know how I got there. And that is terrifying to say the least. I just was upstairs bumping into doors. Everything felt like a game show. I was like, I wonder what sort of fun could be behind that door, you know? And then I saw a light streaming out of uh, one of the doors uh, super majestically. And I was like, man, that could be Narnia or, uh, you know, maybe there's a festival of snacks in there. You know, I wanted to make a drunk discovery and it was <laughs> neither of those. It was a midget fucking. And that was just so much to take in. I was like frozen in the doorway as a fan and a concerned friend. <laughs> Because Brad was going at speeds I didn't think were possible. I was like, dude, slow down, you're gonna burst into cookies. You know, I was just worried about my buddy. My eyes were wide, my jaw was dropped, I made a wish, you know, I was just trying to get something for me out of it. <laughs> Seeing a midget fuck wasn't even on my bucket list. After I saw it, I went home, wrote it down, and crossed it off my bucket list. It's like, that shit should have been there. I gotta dream bigger. No pun intended. <laughs> leave you with one thing before we take this party up a notch. Um, again, perspective. If you got a job you hate or you got some friends in your circle you're not keen on, learn from it, okay? That's how you're gonna become your best self and take it outside to be around the rest of us, which is what we all should be striving for. I had jobs that I fucking despised. My first job was bagging groceries at Albertsons. Uh, hated that shit, got sucked in, the slogan, very catchy, Albertsons, it's your store. I was like, oh, hell yeah, then I'm gonna steal beer, you know? <laughs> and I did, and I got fired, but before that, <laughs> I bagged some uh, toaster strudels and I hated that shit. I was 17 looking at this thing as uh, possibly the pinnacle, as good as it's gonna get, glass half full approach. But every day, a couple kids came in with a lot of pizzazz that really turned my day around. And I think we can all attest any job is more tolerable if you got a fun cast of characters working alongside you. And every day, one kid in particular, a man named Brian, came in so fucking fired up, just so juiced up for the day, little slow, but so much enthusiasm. He was like, Adam, Adam, what's up, man? What's up, dog? What's up? What's up, man? Hey, hey, man, hey, hey, you, hey, you really got some fucking. Playing today? I was like, you know what? Fuck yeah, Brian. Here I was, thinking bagging groceries is as good as it's gonna get, and you come in with this different attitude and mindset. You know what, dude? Brian, let's have some fucking fun. And then I would watch him drop a case of Diet Pepsi onto a loaf of bread. <laughs> and not think there was anything wrong with that. God bless him, just boom, have a good day. And then you get to watch the customer not say shit. That was the best part of that equation. You know, just, uh, thanks for not fucking up the Pepsi, God damn it. And Brian would check in with me like I had something to do with it. Thank you, taught me everything I know. I was like, fuck that dude, that was your call, man. I know it's the other way around. Pepsi then bread, motherfucker. We learned that on day one. Have a good day. But Brian logged a lot of hours and I knew there was room for air and I'll never forget it. Holiday season, Seattle, Washington, 1998 rolls around. A lot of customers coming through, a lot of items to assess and organize. Brian dropped three jars of pickles consecutively. I think the chaos and the holidays got to him and he panicked, man. You don't know the true impact or magnitude, by the way, pickles have hitting the floor one after the other provides <laughs> until you see and hear that shit live. It is just as intense as you imagine. Just pickles, pickles, fucking Brian fucked up, right? <laughs> Record scratch moment. Everyone in the store was like, Gah. I even heard a guy three aisles down go, that's the most pickles I've ever seen. <laughs> Everyone's losing their fucking mind. Customer, justifiably, couldn't keep it together. Was like, dude, come on, man, are you serious? Are you even paying attention? What are you, fucking retarded? 
Oh yeah, hadn't seen Brian's face yet. It was deep down in that bag trying to organize shit properly. So Brian hears it and does this slow dramatic movie lookup. He's like, what'd you say? <laughs> Customer was like, oh shit, what are the odds? Um, Sorry, all right? I want the pickles in the bag, they're on the floor. They're on the floor, I want them in the bag, I'm sorry. Just being a dick about it. And here's why I love Brian, he had so much integrity, really stuck up for himself, put his foot down, but didn't want to make the customer or the moment more awkward or uncomfortable than it had to be. Looked right at the dude verbatim, I'll never forget it. Goes, it's okay, man, it's all right, people get angry, but just so you know, I'm not retarded. I'm a human being and I made a mistake. All right, sweetest shit ever. I still get choked up thinking about that sound bite. As soon as he said it, I heard the more you know music playing in my head, just banana, right? But I heard it in Brian's voice, so it was like, bang, yeah, bang, bang. Yeah, it's more fun to hear it that way. And fuck you if you're not laughing, he can sing too. Here's how the story wraps up. I got a crazy photographic memory. I don't know when I got it or when it was applied, but I saw Brian and his brother and sister at the mall I grew up in a few months ago, roaming around, and I'm like, I gotta check in and say, what's up? It'd be rude of me not to, it's been 17 plus years. So I go, yo, Brian. And he goes, well, yeah. I was like, yo, it's Adam from Albertsons, you remember? And he goes, oh shit, what's up, dog? How you doing? I'm like, I'm good, man. I, uh, I live in LA now, I'm doing stand up. He's like, oh shit, Hollywood. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Have you met Harrison Ford yet? I'm like, that's a weird question, man. No, I haven't, but <laughs> see if I get that friendship going. How, how you doing? He's like, I'm good, man, I'm good. I'm still working at Albertsons, you know, <laughs> Albertsons till I die, probably. <laughs> And what's your stand-up about? I'm like, oh, you know, it's a little this, a little that. He goes, did you any jokes about Albertsons? Uh, you know, not too much funny to report on that front, Brian, to be honest. And then I swear to God, he leans in real close to me and goes, do you remember when I dropped the pickles? <laughs> like, fuck yeah, man. I think about that every day of my life. <laughs> and then I can't make this up. He goes, I did that shit on purpose. <laughs> Whoa. Of course you did. <laughs> it looked too premeditated, you know what I'm saying? There was a motive involved for sure. As soon as he said that, I tried to replay it in my head. I was like, was there a moment I missed out on that could have led me to see this was about to happen? Like, was Brian trying to check in? Like, you know, shit, you're about to go down. <laughs> Grab all your favorite pickles, I'm dropping them all, baby. <laughs> so I go, Brian, why'd you do that, man? Because I still talk to him. Late night, Facebook, he always hits me up. It's always so late, three, four in the morning. We start playing. <laughs> followed by a Will Smith inspirational video. <laughs> you gotta watch this shit, dog, it's powerful. <laughs> followed by an invite to play Uno. <laughs> I'm like, dude, Brian, it's 4 a.m. <laughs> He's like, pussy. <laughs> All right, draw four, bitch. <laughs> and then just no response for six months. <laughs> so I go, Brian, why'd you do that? He goes, you really wanna know, man? I'll tell you why I did that shit. I'm like the James Bond of pickles, man. I'm like, yeah, dude, I, what, what does that mean? Why did you do it? I know, fucking Bruce Willis, I'm in this motherfucker. Why did you do it, dude? Fucking Will Smith, dude, welcome to Earth. Brian, shut the fuck up. Why did you do it? Cause that guy fucked my mom once. That's why my parents got divorced. Whoa, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? I'll take things I didn't think you were gonna say for a thousand, Alex. What a gangster. Do you understand how simple Brian's revenge tactics were? This kid was just like, oh really? You fucked up my childhood? Okay, well guess who's not taking their pickles home today. <laughs> you guys ready to take the show up or not? You guys having a good time so far? I know you can do better than that. Make it loud for a special guest from Netflix and Showtime. My man in the black polo with the thumbs up, ready to go in the corner. Yeah, you're the captain of every bowling league. You look like you like to tan. Is that true, my man? Or do you just have high blood pressure? Which one is it? Can you tell me which one is it? Can you tell us real quick? Which one is it? Which, 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 which one is it? Which one is it? <laughs> he just goes, okay. <laughs> How long have you been married, dude? Five years, congrats. Nice, nobody here gives a shit, but... It's all right, you didn't do it for them. You did it for you. What's that? Care. My friends care. Your friends care. Oh yeah. 
These are your friends? Who's your best friend in this group here? What's that? Because there's uh, three couples, so like, you know, there's obviously like one couple that, that probably came last minute and you're like, God damn it, are they still coming? <laughs> Which couple is it? What's your best friend? Who's your best friend? Ooh, I'd love to figure it out. Which, Which couple is it? And who's in second place? <laughs> I'm a man on the end here in the hat and the glasses. What's your name, dude? Mike. Hi. Mike? 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 Oh, Mark. oh, it's Mark. Mark. Whoa, you don't know your name. Don't you think that's important, Mike? Mark. Mike, Mark. Mark, Mike, Mike, Mark. Mike, Mike, Mark. Mike, 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 Boy, that's gotta be so uh, terrible for job interviews when they're like, so uh, nice to meet you. What's your name? Mike, Mike, Mark. Mike, Mark. Mike, 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 what do you want? What about my man out front, dude? Shaking your legs super nervously. Hoping I don't sing to thee. What's your name? Do you live in San Francisco? Is this your girlfriend? No. Is this your wife? No. Did you meet tonight? No. Are you? A man a couple rows back <laughs> Sitting like A.C. Slater <laughs> Super cool, chill back, sit back, look I like your mojo, dude You look super comfortable <laughs> Do you bring that sort of laid-back attitude to your life? In your every day from nine to five, what do you do? What do you do, dude? Electrician. Electrician. Cool. Way to bring the energy down. 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 There literally could have been nothing more boring you could have said. Way to bring the energy down. Thanks for the making this show possible. Thanks for the lights and the sound and everything. Couldn't do it without you. Was that the dream when you were a kid on the playground? Was that the dream? You know how when you're a kid, you got delusional thoughts about what's possible, and then you grow up and you're like, oh shit, not anything's actually possible. Time to readjust and reassess my dreams. What was your dream? What did you want to do before you became an electrician? Did you want to be an athlete? Did you want to compete in a math elite? Did you want to go to the moon? Did you want to drink with a spoon and be the first guy to drink with a spoon? <laughs> Improv is tough. <laughs> Before we wrap it up And I hope you wrap it up With whoever this is <laughs> Don't want a baby that you don't Want You know what I'm talking about How y'all doing? Y'all good? Yeah. Oh man, thank y'all so much for coming Oh, You guys uh, Ready to be offended? No, don't fucking say that and then go on Twitter afterwards like, oh, Matt has some opinions of his own and end my fucking career, okay? Just want to have a good time tonight, all right? Comedy almost isn't fun, okay? Having to adhere to everybody's sensitivities. Since when? That shit is so new. Remember like three years ago when no one gave a fuck about how you felt? Like three years ago, if you were in public and we were like, I don't like, a stranger would come up and be like, shut up, bitch, and punch you in your chest. Like, ah. Now I hurt on the outside and the inside. Uh, I feel like we've gotten so sensitive as a society, man. 
We've gotten so soft. Like fresh out the pool dick soft. That, <laughs> all the fellas understand that. You get out that cold water, you don't even recognize yourself anymore. You're like, whose dick is this? Who put a baby dick on me? <laughs> That's how I feel like we are as a society, man. Just all and soft. Ugh, it's exhausting. So I'm glad we could all come together for a night of laughter. It's good to see y'all. Black people. <laughs> good to see y'all. White people. Sitting in the back. How's it feel? <laughs> well, you're smiling. Good. I'm glad you're in a good mood. Did you say sorry today? Did you say sorry to a black person today? Get your Venmo out right now. Cash out every black person in here. Five dollars gets you through the rest of the show. We're gonna get these reparations one way or another, okay? I'm sorry it took so long. I just got here, all right? Y'all gotta learn how to take Bitcoin or something, but we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. Ugh, white people have been so sorry in 2021, haven't they? Oh my God. It's been my favorite show to watch. Just white people trying to outwoke each other in front of black people. Because it'll always start reasonable and then just gradually get out of hand. Like, white person number one will start low. Like, well, you know, I voted for Obama two times in a row. You're like, all right, solid politics, okay. Now, white person number two has to top Obama, so he's like, that's crazy. I was just talking about how Jesus was black. And you're like, yeah, well, Walked on water, probably couldn't swim. <laughs> My check out. Now white person number three is gonna top Obama and black Jesus. He's panicking, he says some ignorant shit like, well, Medea's my favorite franchise. You're like, gotcha, liar. La Medea is nobody's favorite franchise. <laughs> Not even black people's. <laughs> yeah, you're a reacher. I think I go Soul Plane, then Medea movies. <laughs> God. <laughs> Ugh, it's all this white guilt. It's heavy. It's starting to feel like alcoholism a little bit. And like every room I enter is like an AA meeting where I gotta plead my case. It's like I have to enter every situation like, hey guys, my name is Matt. Just wanna introduce myself, let you know I do identify as a straight white male. And everybody's like, boo. They're like, ah, I know, I know, I'm trash. But I would... I would really appreciate it if you use my proper pronoun, the problem. <laughs> what an uncomfortable time to be a straight white male. <laughs> it's a tough time for my people. <laughs> for once, you know, it's, you gotta know when to fold them. You know what I mean? We stayed in the game too long. We can't be doing that. Coming back to haunt us hard. <laughs> Rightfully so. It's just uncomfortable because to be a straight white male in 2021, you're kind of guilty by association, aren't you? Which is a shitty place to be if you didn't do anything. <laughs> like, I just turned 25. I just got here, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't do anything. I'm a new white, like, give me a chance. <laughs> give me a chance to wipe my wrongs, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, just wanna sing along to some songs, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> Just give me a chance. It wasn't, it's not my fault. It's not like I made the conscious decision to be born a straight white male. I probably would have. <laughs> Historically speaking, why not be on a winning team? You know what I mean? But I didn't get to choose. It wasn't my decision. Therefore, I can't, I can't apologize for it. That'd be weird. And, and you don't have to. That's the thing. You don't have to apologize for it. Just be a decent fucking human being. Yeah. Is that too much to ask? Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the sound of white guilt. Oh. <laughs> Music to my ears. Don't have to apologize for it. And I, and I won't. I'll apologize for being born a straight white male when LeBron James apologizes for being six foot nine. <laughs> Didn't choose this life, just happened to be born that way, right? And they both have their own set of perks, don't they? Like, sure, he can do a fucking windmill 360 dunk, and I can raise my voice to the police. So it's, it's a give and a take, you know what I mean? Like, I'd love to yam on a motherfucker, but I guess I'll just get out of this ticket. <laughs> Gotta choose your superpower, man. Life ain't fair for everybody, okay? Make white people uncomfortable. Check. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm so happy to be shooting this in LA. I love LA. Yeah. Uh, I love it because I'm not from here. So I have perspective. Um, I'm actually from Ohio. Yeah, that's right. That, that's, that, that felt as welcoming as it should have. Man, if you've never been to Ohio, you, you don't got them. You absolutely don't. I don't care who died there. Send an email, okay? You do not have to go. It's so trash. Oh, my God. I'm not even from, like, a fun part of Ohio. I didn't get, like, Cleveland or Cincinnati. Nothing fun. I'm from the middle of nowhere, like, our west of Columbus, surrounded by cornfields, country, the sticks, we call it. Population, like, 1,500 people. Like, the kind of small town where, like, the gas station's also the grocery store. <laughs> You know what I mean? Fuck around, get some sandwiches and some diesel. You here? Why not save a trip? My hometown was so country, man. We used to have, uh, we used to have drive your tractor to school day. <laughs> Swear to God. Do you guys remember school spirit week? Well, like every day of the week would have a theme to it, like pajama day or twin day. We would have one day in that week when like the rich kids would pull up and just fucking flex on us. John Deere style. <laughs> And the women in my school would just get wet. Like, oh my Lord, he's got land. Cause that's all people cared about where I was from, was fucking farming. Like you didn't need eight inches if you had eight acres. Like that was, <laughs> that was the biggest flex you could come with. You couldn't compete with a farmer. If he's plowing land, he could plow your bitch straight up. Like there's just nothing you could do. Nothing you could do. But it's the type of small town where like, life just kind of dissipates. You know what I mean? Like everyone lives the exact same life timeline. Like you, you, you go to high school, you get pregnant, <laughs> then you graduate, <laughs> maybe. And then you get a job, get married and so on and so forth. Then you die in this hometown. It's depressing. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to do for fun there. Everybody just drinks and does drugs but not cool like we do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Theirs is because they're sad. <laughs> so depressing, man. I didn't realize drugs were as big of a problem when I was living there, but apparently it's gotten worse. Um, I found out about three or four weeks ago, this kid who I went to school with, he was like two grades older than me. We didn't know each other too well, but there's only like 300 people in a school, so we kind of know each other. Found out like three or four weeks ago, this kid, um, OD'd from heroin in this town at, at his job. The same job he got when we were in high school. He lived and died there. And obviously the whole town got together and they mourned the loss of their dealer. And no, guys, don't get weird, okay? There was, no, there's a silver lining moment. The whole town, I swear to God, they started a GoFundMe and they raised enough money so that they could get him a memorial bench at his favorite park, <laughs> which I thought was a really sweet memento, you know, to provide other people seating to do their heroin. <laughs> I've never done heroin, but I imagine you want to sit down. <laughs> okay, whatever. You guys don't know him. Okay, I'm just giving you a little perspective. That I, I, I could have been a bench, okay? But I'm not. <laughs> Nothing like where I'm from. It's so weird. I'm good looking. I don't like it any more than you guys do, okay? This is not good for comedy, okay? And it's so weird for me. My looks are so confusing to me because you guys haven't known me my entire life, so you have no context of this, but this shit just happened. Puberty hit me so disrespectfully late. I was ugly as shit for the first 22 years of my life. I was so ugly for so long. If I would have been on Wayfair, they would have returned me immediately. Like, I was so ugly. No, don't, oh, okay. I spent the first 22 years of my life building a personality for what? You think I need to be funny now? No, it's a fucking waste of my time, to be honest gotten me nowhere <laughs> oh. and, it, and it's so weird because when you spend so much of your life as one thing and then you're drastically changing into something else overnight it fucks with you emotionally like I still it's still so new to me that I don't quite 
grasp it. It doesn't. I don't see myself that way. Like I know I look like every fuck boy ever, but I do identify as an ugly person. So um, I I think that does technically make me trans. Um, trans handsome, transom. Uh, yeah, we wait till we get our bathrooms. It's gonna be all mirrors, bunch of pretty people doing cocaine. It's gonna be dope, and y'all can't come. <laughs> so weird man it's such a drastic lifestyle change too because people treat you so different like nobody likes attractive people right you assume their lives are easier like there's no sympathy for pretty people at all which is uh, another thing you guys might not know about me is i have clinical depression and an anxiety disorder and you guys are just waiting for the punchline that's how <laughs> fucked up it is that i can that I could come up here and vent to y'all, basically being like, help! And y'all like, get your cute ass out of here. <laughs> and it's not funny. Awesome. Okay. It, it, it's so weird. There's no sympathy for pretty people. No one gives a fuck how sad you are if you have high cheekbones. At all. <laughs> people act like I don't have any problems. At all. I could be crying my eyes out in bed, and people are just like, Woof, what could you possibly be so upset about, huh? I bet you're just swimming in pussy. And it's like... <laughs> Yeah, but you know what I'm not swimming in? Self-confidence, security, believe it or not. Someone who listens to me. I can't even hang myself because my jawline will cut the fucking rope. And I'm just on the ground, handsome. Even if I did die, it's gotta be an open casket. People are like, God. Damn, he looks good in a suit. That's really nice. That's, blue is his color. That is nice. <laughs> There's no sympathy for pretty people. You guys are lucky. <laughs> Count your blessings, uggos. Shit ain't sweet up here either, okay? Everybody's dealing with shit. I just want you to remember that. Remember that. Next time you're in bed having the worst day, crying your eyes out and your friends are by your bedside or blowing up your phone like oh my god are you okay is there anything we can do to make you feel better what's wrong just remember it means you're ugly <laughs> so I, I don't make up the rules okay i'm sorry if you were cute they'd be like get up bitch we're going to the club three milli rocks be right back to it no problem but rules are rules <laughs> it's weird because it's giving me um it's given me the perspective of not judging people based on how they look. I'm a big fan of that. That's why I like the masks. <laughs> Love it. You don't know who's ugly with a mask on, do you? It's kind of a fun game to play, isn't it? Just walking them through the grocery store like, does this bitch have a beak? Like, you don't know. You don't know what people's situations are. You got to get to know them before you can judge. Like, you wouldn't be able to just assume I'm a douchebag if I have my mask on. You'd have no basis. I could walk into any Starbucks with my mask on. They would just think I'm any random lesbian. You know what I mean? I could be anybody. <laughs> could be anybody. They go in, they're like, what's your name? I'm like, Matt. They're like, you are so brave. <laughs> and the code to your bathroom is four... <laughs> Man, the masks made it so hard to holler at people, didn't it? Because you don't know what 60% of their face looks like. That shit was so dangerous. You ever talk to somebody for a while and you're like, I, I gotta know. And you gotta come up with some like cute, clever way to get them to pull their mask down. Say some dumb shit like, have you smiled today? Have you, have you smile? You look, you, I feel like you have a cute smile. Will you give me a smile real quick? And you've been chatting forever and she's been all eyes. And she's like, oh, I don't know. I guess I could give you a little... Blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, God! Oh my God, I talked to you for an hour. I gave you my time. I had no idea. <laughs> but I like him. I'm a big fan of not judging people based on how they look. Because if there's one thing we all have in common, every single person in this room, is everybody's going through something. Right? Everybody in here is dealing with some shit that nobody else has any idea about. I go through shit all the time. You guys would have no clue. Like one thing you might not know is uh, I have terrible luck. Bad random shit happens to me all the time. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you an incredibly embarrassing and humbling story. I need a moment. <laughs> Just thirsty. I 
uh, last year, I had to have surgery on my nipples. <laughs> They're fine now. You can stop looking. Last year, I ended up developing this freak medical condition. Like, this shit is so rare. It only happens to, like, 12-year-old boys and 80-year-old men. And somehow, I'm both. Like, it's so rare. My doctor looked me in my eyes and was like, I don't know why this happened to you. I was like, first of all, I'm up here. Second... <laughs> Don't not give me an answer, okay? It's not very professional. It was this freak condition that was causing the breast tissue, um, the breast tissue under my pecs that bench about 285, eight to 10 reps. <clears throat> That's neither here nor there. Uh, it was causing the breast tissue to grow incongruently under my nipples. Now, before your imaginations start running fucking wild, let me shut that down right now, okay? Whatever image you're drawing up in your head, get it out of there. It wasn't anything drastic at all. If you had never seen me shirtless before, you would never even know the difference. But you know your body, right? If something's off, just the littlest bit, you notice it more than anybody else ever would. So it was, it was just messing with me mentally. Like I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. I wasn't comfortable taking my shirt off. My Instagram was suffering. And I was like, you know, starts messing with business. You gotta get checked out. So I go to the doctor and he's like, yeah, you got it. And I'm like, up. I said, like, what, what, do we, what do we do? And he explains to me that it's actually an irreversible condition. Meaning it'll never just go away. You can't take medicine for it. You, you have to have it surgically removed from your body. I was like, all right, man, what's, what's the damage on something like that? And he explains to me that this surgery is going to be $9,000. Nine racks. Out of pocket, mind you, because technically it's cosmetic. It's not life-threatening, so insurance doesn't cover it. $9,000 in the middle of the pandemic, which I don't know how much you guys know about stand-up comedy, but... <laughs> This is the first time I've been inside in like two years, man. I've been performing in pickup trucks and Kmart parking lots. Money has not been good to me. I definitely didn't have $9,000 to drop on something that wasn't going to kill me. The breast implants are $10,000. So if you think my life is just oh so easy and I have no problems at all, you go home and you think about the dilemma that I had to sit with by myself every night leading up to this. Like, God damn. Am I about to drop $9,000 on something that's ultimately cosmetic and really only affects how I feel about myself and whoever it is that I'm intimate with? Or do I drop $10,000? <laughs> Get these titties and clean up at the Women's Olympics. Are you kidding me? If I go full transition, it is over for you bitches. I don't even run track and field. I'm placing bronze, guaranteed, okay? <laughs> I'm a decent looking dude, but I'm a bad bitch, straight up. <sighs> Didn't need to tell you all that. I don't have a sponsorship. Somebody gonna buy this, a white claw gonna be like, yeah, 60 gram. And I'm gonna be like, it's all here, bro. I don't know. No, I got nothing. I'll let you suck one for 30 seconds. That's about all. Like. <laughs> all right, that was weird. Um, when I got this chin, I thought things would be different. I thought things would be easier. I thought dating would be easier. No. Maybe it's me. I'm, I'm very picky. I'm so hard to date. I'm, I, I have such a specific type. I, I predominantly only date older women. Just personal preference. Like late 30s, early 40s. Oh my God, such a sweet spot. Oh. Well, not ones who sit in the back. Uh, <laughs> This bitch is wooing from her handicap spot in the parking lot. <laughs> 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 
I also don't know if you match the criteria. It's got to be late 30s, early 40s, man. Because women are kind of like Captain Crunch, right? Like, they're the best right before they're gross. <laughs> Fuck y'all, that's a solid cereal joke, okay? Because if you fuck with Captain Crunch, if you fuck with Captain Crunch, you know it's a very fine window. If it tears your mouth up and it's oatmeal, okay? It's a very fine line. And it's like 42. Apparently, who knew? Some of y'all not laughing because you're sitting there with some grits. And that's fine. That's... Snitch on yourself if you want to. <laughs> Maybe a little brown sugar in the front row. Put your dash on. That's how you holler. No verbal communication needed. I knew what that meant. <laughs> yeah, older women are so dope, man. Sometimes they got kids, which means they got snacks. Dude, I'm so easy, man. I can't cook at all. I'll fuck you for a Lunchable. That's a fact. I'm so easy. Are you kidding me? If you have a crock pot, I will shut shit down. To the best of my ability. I don't know. I don't know who you were dating before me or what they were doing, but I don't want to make false promises because sex is hard it is ladies y'all have it so easy uh oh never heard that before i fully believe i fully believe women have sex so much easier than men oh, yeah. one hoe in the back just like yeah it just opens up it's crazy it just does its own thing dude <laughs> Dudes come out of her pussy like this. I think it's so true. It's so much less work. All you technically have to do is like, you know what I mean? Like, that's all. You, just be punctual. That's your only responsibility is to be on time because we will start without you. That's the only requirement. Do you realize? Do you realize as a man, like, there's a certain level of excitement I have to get. And I have to maintain this excitement the entire time while I'm focusing on a million things. I'm focusing on me. I'm focusing on you. I'm switching positions. It's a full court press the entire time. You focus on so much that sometimes, sometimes you go quick. You fuckers leave me hanging on this right now like I'm the only dude who's at, at my special. Y'all gonna disrespect me like this. Y'all ain't shit, man. Oh, oh, I'm the only person ever to bust fast. Hilarious, you guys. Y'all ain't shit. You know that? It happens to the best of us, okay? There's no need to be a big deal, be a big problem about it. Would you be mad if your food came out early at a restaurant? No, you'd be like, the chef is killing it. I got all this time for activities. I don't come fast, I just respect your schedule, okay? I know you... I know you gotta take your kids to school in the morning, so... <laughs> sex is hard, the build-up is fun, though. Like, sexting, sexting is the most fun, oh my god. Dudes love sexting. We're so good at it. Because we're just lying the whole time. Oh, it's so easy. We lie so much. We talk so much game of what we can't wait to do to y'all when we see it. We ain't doing none of that ever <laughs> at all. We're like the JK Rowling of dick pics. Like, we just writing fairy tales. The shit we are never going to do to y'all ever. We set the bar too high. We say crazy stuff like, like girl, when I see you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you up against the wall. I'm going to... I'm gonna fuck you in the curtains. Like, you ain't fucking nobody in the curtains. You've been to my house. I got blinds. You want me to scratch my back up? Not very practical. I lied recently. That's how the game goes. I was sexing with this girl, and like, I could see where she was going with it, but like, it was just rude of her to assume. Like, I was sexing with this girl, and she was like, I'm only 103 pounds. You could throw me around. Like, I responded as a dude. I was like, that's right. But on the inside, I was like, that's more than you think it is. That's... <laughs> Fellas, back me.
me up on this. Like, oh, 103? Get the fuck out. Oh, it's nothing? It's, it's light work? Oh, pick me up then. How about, how about fuck your lower back? How about that? I haven't done a deadlift since 10th grade. Now fucking you's gotta be leg day? Now I gotta fuck you with one of those weight trainer belts that Mexicans wear in the gym for no reason? Mexicans be in the gym doing all arms. Got a whole back brace. Like, why you got jeans on? He said some people didn't like that. Yeah. Well, it is what it is. <sighs> I know I talk a lot of shit, but I'm the problem. Uh, I'm 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 well aware. I'm so I'm so picky. I have a lot of red flags that I look for. That's why like the first date's always the hardest because you you look I feel like you're looking for things to not like, and that's so tough because there's. A lot of shit I don't like. Uh, I'll list a couple of red flags for it. And feel free to tell me if I'm out of pocket for not being okay with some of these things. Um, red flag number one, I don't fuck with girls who go on boats. <laughs> it's hoe shit. I feel like a lot of people in here have been cheated on. <laughs> Not on land. <laughs> That's what I feel. Like. Yeah, but I'm happy to have y'all support. It's because it's insanity to me. If you live in LA and you date a hot girl for long enough, at some point this chick will come to you and say something like, "Babe, there's just this guy, a friend of mine, who who wants to just take me and my eight hot girlfriends into the abyss. Are you out of your fucking mind? Why? Why? Stay dry. Why?" Like, no, people get fucked on boats. Boats were built for fucking. Since the beginning of boats, people been fucking on them. B-O-A-T, bring out ass and titties. It's been in front of us the whole time. It's always been an acronym. My girl not getting on no boats. No kayaks, no canoes, no, no, no paddle boats. You're not working up a sweat next to another man. Not dealing with it. That's why women love Titanic so much. Because it's a beautiful story about a chick who cheats on her man with a scrub while her boyfriend is on the ship. No. <laughs> you say you like boats? Get out. Get out right now. Get, you got big boat energy right now, and I'm not fucking with it. <laughs> so that's the big one. Um, red flag number two. I don't fuck with Ouija boards. <laughs> Obviously, this only pertains to white women. Um, <laughs> And you know what? This shouldn't even be a story that I have to tell, but it's been weighing heavy on my soul lately, so I'll, I'll let y'all in. A couple of years ago, I was doing a show at a comedy club in Hollywood, and I get off stage, and this beautiful girl comes up to me, gives me her number. This happens all the time. And, kidding. Um, she comes up to me, gives me her number. She's beautiful. We go our separate ways for the evening. The very next day, she texts me and was like, hey, I want to come over. And I'm like, bet still got it you know what I mean so she comes over I let her in we go sit on the couch and it's me and her on the couch and then my roommate is down the hall in his room his door is open you can't see into the living room from his room but he hears all of this he's a witness so we sit on the couch and for the first two minutes I'm asking all the questions that guys you know, don't care about um, but you, we don't, don't want to come across so too eager so we ask silly questions like you know you gotta family or you know, <laughs> you know those are your real ears you didn't get your ears done like sh vague shit that we don't really care about at all so we're talking for like two minutes and then she hits me with yeah um do you have a Ouija board and I'm like I don't 
even have a headboard. <laughs> nah, don't, don't got that on me, sorry. And she goes, well, can we go to Target and get one? I'm like, no, I, I've got Disney Plus. That's what we're doing. And she's not giving up. She was like, what? Well, can I make one? I'm like, what in the demonic charcuterie are you trying to bring into my home right now? And I'm trying to hit. So I'm like, yeah, sure. If you can find the things in my apartment to make a Ouija board, go ahead. Biggest mistake of my life. This stranger who I just met starts ransacking my apartment. She's opening every cabinet, every cupboard, every closet, going through everything. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a video of when a deer accidentally gets inside and it starts hitting everything like it's never seen walls before. But she's going crazy. She finds a couple of markers to write stuff down. She finds this little glass piece to be like the centerpiece. And she's like, <sighs> that's how hard she's working. She's out of breath. She's like, <sighs> we don't have something to make the board. And I was like, damn. Yeah, uh, uh, guess we gotta watch Monsters, Inc. Uh, why don't you just sit on down? And she goes, hold on a second. So she gets up and she goes over to the front door. She opens the front door and she goes outside. And my roommate comes down the hallway and is like. And I'm like. <laughs> so he goes over and slams the door shut behind her. I laughed so hard, but again, there's a mission at hand. So I'm like, all right, stop playing. So I get up, I go open the door. It's been four seconds. I go, I open the door. There's nobody out there. She's gone. So I'm like, hey. <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> I'm gonna shut the door. And once it's shut, it's gonna stay shut. You're gonna be stuck out here. I'm serious, Amanda. <laughs> All right. So I go, I swing the door and turn around and straight out of a scary movie, this chick's foot, bah, stops it right before it closes on the frame. I was like, Jesus Christ. And here comes this chick lugging in this giant piece of cardboard. I'm like, where did you get that? She goes, it was just out there. <laughs> Bitch, no it wasn't. No, it was not just out there. So she brings it in, she sets it on the coffee table, and we both sit on the couch, and I'm, I don't know where it came from. I, gotta, I, I lift it up. It's from the TV box I threw in the dumpster four days prior. <laughs> this chick brought garbage back into my home to summon the devil so you know the sex is gonna be dope <laughs> she's fucking crazy i'm in i gotta do it now you know what i mean i mean i've never smashed a homeless chick before but she clearly brought all of her things <laughs> She's like, all right, you ready to make one? And I'm like, I guess, yeah. So she draws it out, and but before I continue, does anybody not know what a Ouija board is? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You really don't know? No oh, man, okay. Well, first of all, God bless you. Uh, <laughs> you're so naive. Um, <laughs> a Ouija board is essentially, it's, it's, a, it's a toy board that you can get from any store like Walmart or Target or whatever, it's, uh, and people use it to drunk text the dead, essentially. <laughs> it's all it's good for. And it's a very simple layout. Uh, it has the, the alphabet right here, close center, middle of the boards. It's where um, the centerpiece is supposed to be guided by a spirit to spell out certain words to answers that you ask it. So in the middle is the alphabet, right corner is no, left corner is yes. Alphabet. Left, yes, no. Yes, alphabet, no. So she draws the whole thing up, and she's like, 
all right, so there's a couple of rules you have to know when you're going to play with a Ouija board. I was like, yeah, duh. I mean, everybody knows that. <laughs> but uh, refresh me again. She was like, all right, rule number one, you never play with it by yourself. Ever. I'm like, okay. <laughs> rule number two, you have to remember to say goodbye. Because apparently you can't ghost the ghosts. <laughs> So she's like, all right, let's play. Okay. So got our hands on the piece, and she's like, all right, we got to ask it a question. I'm like, all right, go ahead. She's like, all right, um, okay. Is there anybody here with us? And you just hear my roommate down the hallway go, yeah, his name is Brandon, and he fucking lives here. <laughs> I was like, touche, he pays rent. Um, which, do you? No. So she's like, all right, I'll ask you another question. Did anybody die here? Doesn't move. I'm like, well, this is crazy. <laughs> she's like, oh, well, then you ask it something. I'm like, okay. Um, should we go lay down in my room? <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> We don't want to piss off the dead, do we? She was like, you're right. So we go lay down. This chick brings the cardboard in the room with her. She sets it at the foot of the bed like it's a golden retriever. Now we're under the covers. We're doing more makeshift conversation. You know, I'm like, you know, you got dreams or you know, what's your favorite? picture or you know just vague shit I don't care about and about like four or five minutes after this she just knocks out like not a subtle like mm, starting to feel a little bit tired like just straight yeah and then I, <laughs> like she is slumped and now it's her asleep me under the covers and I'm staring down just terrified of this Samsung TV box. And all I could think is, this bitch didn't say goodbye. <laughs> now I'm terrified up by myself. I'm trying to wake her up. I'm like, hey, hey, Allison. She's asleep. Now I gotta play with it by myself. Uh, so I start jerking off and she wakes up straight out of an exorcism. It was like, ah, what are you doing? And I was like, oh God. And I swear to God, a spirit left my body and hit her right in the face. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, I never saw her again. I never saw. I'm to this day. I'm not convinced she wasn't a ghost. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. <sighs> that's that's why I can't mess with young people. I really can't. She was 25, 26. Just put off of it. it. Makes me feel so much older dealing with somebody like that. I do feel older. I date older women. All my friends are older. I fucking hate kids so much kids fucking suck man oh my god they're so garbage i don't like young people at all man we just don't click i'm not on i don't know none of the apps that they're on what's the what's the one app that literally every kid is on it um no amber alert <laughs> every kid is on amber alert aren't they it's like man anybody looking for you how many followers you got enough for a search party i hope See, this is hilarious to me because I can feel the hypocrisy radiating off y'all right now. Like, I'm the asshole. That's adorable. Okay. When's the last time you got an Amber Alert on your phone and your first reaction wasn't, oh, shit. How do I turn this off? How do I... Uh, none of y'all. Like, we gotta find these kids. Not one person. Y'all haven't found a kid since milk is in a carton. Okay, judge me. It's a terrible app. It's the worst app. It's vague. Like, be on the lookout for a 2015 Silver Prius. Like, is he in my Uber? Is this a ride share? 
Did I hit pool? The alarm's the worst part, by far. They haven't changed the alarm in like 30 years. It's still the same. I get so mad when that shit goes off on my phone. I could be standing next to the kidnapper and be like, hey, is it in the settings? I go to general notification. I close out of the Wayfair app. Do you guys remember that? You guys remember when Wayfair was selling other stuff? <laughs> For any of you guys who might not remember, Wayfair, the uh, furniture company in 2020, was accused of allegedly <laughs> being involved in human trafficking. And we forgave them pretty quick, didn't we? They, they're killing it. Their business is booming right now. Supply the chairs y'all sitting on right now. So if you could, please give a warm round of applause for our sponsor. <laughs> Bro, they came back hot with some deals too. They were like, I'm sorry, five, our bad, 10. And I was like, these are the ages of the discounts. Like, I just don't trust you anymore. I don't trust you. It was bad, man. And we found out as a people, we hate human trafficking. Not as much as we hate an unfurnished patio. Am I right? <laughs> Them umbrellas ain't cheap, man. No, it's not funny. It's not funny. It's very serious. And I do feel very bad for all the families affected by that, obviously. I feel terrible about it. But I especially feel bad for the dude who just wanted a desk. You know what I mean? How many times have you got the wrong order in the mail? And I... <laughs> Now you gotta get a crib too? A lot of money, out of pocket. <laughs> it's messed up, man. You can't support them. Don't, don't support Wayfair. They're terrible. Not as bad as Ikea, but <laughs> fuck Ikea, Are you kidding me? They're way worse. Ikea needs to come with a kid just to help put that shit together. They, so, somebody gotta hold these sides, bro, god damn. <laughs> Can I go home now? I don't know, man. That's a lot of leftover pieces. You sure you didn't skip any steps? <laughs> There's always so many leftover pieces after an Ikea project, isn't there? You look at a final Ikea piece like, I guess that's it. I don't... <laughs> and you find out you messed up on step eight of 49, you're like, I guess we just don't have a bottom shelf. It is what it is. We'll, we'll put tall stuff there. <laughs> Guys. Relax. Still me. Remember the dude who's been telling jokes for 45 minutes? <laughs> Still just a joke. This, this is why comedy is the most frustrating job in the world. It's because this is the only job in the world that I would have to reiterate to y'all what I'm doing. That I'm just kidding. I don't mean this shit that comes out of my mouth. Rappers don't have to do that. Rappers are literally like, I fucked your bitch and killed your family. And y'all are just like, ah! They don't gotta be like, I'm just rapping. I'm just rapping, y'all. I, would, I wouldn't do nothing like that. I'm David, you know me. I wouldn't do nothing like that. It's so hypocritical, man. That's the one thing comedians do have over rappers, is freedom of speech. It's kind of like an unwritten rule in comedy, right? Like you can joke about messed up stuff as, as long as it's funnier than it is messed up. And rappers don't get that kind of leeway. It's not fair. Like if they admit to a crime they did on beat, they still go to jail. I don't think that's fair. Respect the artistry. Give them a chance, okay? I think if you can make a doper song than the charges you're trying to beat, you get to go home. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. All spectrums of crime, too. Can you imagine Ted Bundy in court? And they're like, you're going to jail forever. And he's like, well, wait till you hear this shit. It's, it's a little song I call I Eat the Pussy Up starring Jay Doms. <laughs> because he's a cannibal. <laughs> okay. That one was a tough sell. That's fine. I understand. Let's see if we can get y'all back with something a little bit more level-headed that we can all kind of get on board with. Um, gun control? Why not, right? <laughs> Can't be worse than the Wayfair shit. It is. This is way worse. If that, if that one wasn't your shit, buckle up. Uh, this, this is a lot harder one to tackle. Gun control is so tricky because I, 
I see both sides. I do understand. I, I, I understand the amendment, everyone's right to have a gun. That makes sense to me, especially when it comes to things like protection or, or providing for your family. That makes sense. But at the same time, everybody, <laughs> every, not everybody gets a gun, right? That's crazy. You all know somebody, you're like, this motherfucker should not have a gun, right? It's so easy to be irresponsible with a gun. When's the last time you held a gun and didn't do this shit? Oh, 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 oh. People freak out every time. Like, no, don't. Like, I wouldn't, but would I? It's a timeless bit. That shit has been funny for centuries. I think it's so easy to be irresponsible with a gun that I think a simple interim solution would be it just needs to be a little bit harder to get the gun. That's all I suggest. I think there's so many tears to responsibility you should have to surpass before you can have a gun. That's all I suggest. And I'm not even proposing anything difficult. Simple shit. Like, if you haven't had sex yet, straight up, no gun. Okay, that, that is way too much power for you. How are you gonna pull a trigger before you've had to pull out? Like, that takes discipline, and I need to see you in a moment of crisis, okay? Can you handle the power? Do you realize if something as simple as that was implemented, if something as simple as having sex was a requirement for getting a registered firearm, what kind of impact that would have on the entire problem? School shootings would drop off almost completely. Have you ever seen pictures of these kids who shoot up schools? They are so fucking ugly. You kind of get it a little bit. Like, they weren't fucking. There has never been a handsome school shooter that they were like, ah, oh, he was gonna be prom king. Like, never once. <laughs> Never. No one has time to write a manifesto and get pussy. That's science, okay? <laughs> it's too much detail. <laughs> Look, I, I'm well aware that school shootings is a very hard thing to try to make funny. But we're gonna try. <laughs> um, and I feel like I owe the explanation as to like, why, why would I joke about something that's fucked up? And the reason being is it's sort of my coping mechanism. I, I try to make light of terrible situations, and luckily through humor, so that I'm not sad every fucking day. Because what's the first thing you do when you wake up every morning? You check your phone, right? You probably get on Twitter, or some, some sort of news, yeah, you get caught up. It doesn't that feel like there's something negative immediately. There's so much negativity in front of our faces daily that I can't imagine living any kind of life where I don't have an outlet for that negativity. It just festers inside of me and makes me a miserable human being. If I have an outlet through humor, I'm gonna use it. You be miserable, not me. <laughs> now, I respect that that's not for everybody. That's not how everybody's brain works. Like, I had a woman furious one time. She stood up in the middle of a show one time when I was doing some other school shooting material. <laughs> and, and she was furious. She stood up and was like, you shouldn't do jokes about school shootings. And I was like, why? <laughs> she was like, because what if it happened to you? Hmm? What if you lost your kid in a school shooting incident? Hmm? Could you make jokes about it then? And I was like, oh, this bitch. <laughs> it's like context, you know what I mean? It's a comedy show. Clearly, everything I'm saying is hypothetical. Like, I'm not talking about this in a literal sense, especially because I don't have any fucking kids, okay? So it's not something I have to think about on a daily basis. But it's something I, I had never taken into consideration. So it did fuck me up a little bit. I had to take a step back as a man and as a comedian and actually ask myself, like, it, if I lost my kid in a school shooting incident, could I ever make jokes about it? And the answer is yeah. It's a hard yes for me, okay? That, <laughs> That is for sure how I would heal through that traumatic experience. Are you kidding me? Second of all, it's my kid. That's fucking fair game, okay? There, <laughs> there is no way I'm not killing it at that funeral. Like, he was never good at hide and seek. Like, come on, man. That shit is too easy, bro. The kids don't play the games anymore. It's easier targets. Hashtag bring back hide and seek. <laughs> I like this topic only because it's, it creates such a divide racially between black people and white people when it comes to the topic of school shootings because it's, it's usually us. 
and black people love to joke all the time. They love to be like, oh, you know, it's all the white kids shooting up all the schools, you know, shooting up the schools, a white kid sport. <laughs> I hear that joke all the time. Shooting up the schools, a white kid sport. It's funny. It's, it's a good joke. Until you think about the history of sports. Because if I know anything about the history of sports, it's that if white people are good at it now, black people are going to be way better at it someday. <laughs> Somebody got to be Wilt. Somebody got to come in and change the game. <laughs> some of you aren't laughing because it's fucked up, and some of you are because you're like, he's, he's right. <laughs> They're going to be faster. They're going to be stronger. <laughs> And canceled. <laughs> awesome. Oh, cancel culture. We gotta chill out. With the cancel culture stuff, we gotta chill out. The spectrum's too broad. I don't have time to care about everything because you make such a big deal about nothing that it takes all of my attention away from the stuff we actually should be canceling and actually should be upset about. And so frustrating. Like, just pick and choose, man. And stop digging up people's old tweets and shit. Straight up. I think it's the most bitch-made thing you could possibly do. Because I'm a big believer that as times change, people change. A lot of the time for the better. Not always, obviously there's exceptions, but a lot of the times. Like, there's so many examples of it in American history in and of itself. You could look at someone like Malcolm X. Malcolm X spent 10 years in prison for robbery and larceny. Got out, went on to become a civil rights activist that literally changed the fucking world. Maya Angelou used to be a prostitute. Went on to be, the fuck is so funny about that? <laughs> what white motherfucker in the back? <laughs> Laughing at what I read in February, huh? He laughed like he hit, like, you know what I mean? God damn. <laughs> she was a prostitute. She went on to become a poet, an author, another civil rights activist that again changed the fucking world. Chance the Rapper. Used to make good music. <laughs> As times change, people change, right? Not, not always for the better. I miss acid rap, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, and the reason I wanted to talk about this is because it happened to me. A few years ago, um, somebody who didn't like me went online and they dug up a bunch of tweets of mine from when I was 15 years old. And when I was 15 years old, uh, as I mentioned, I was born and raised in the middle of bumfuck nowhere Ohio. Like, I didn't know shit about shit. I couldn't have been more ignorant. And anybody who says they didn't do or say some shit when they were 15 years old that they shouldn't have done or don't regret, is a liar, okay? That's the time in your life you're supposed to make mistakes so you learn from them, you grow from them, you don't go on to make those same mistakes where you're a responsible adult, yeah? So when I was 15 years old, I was going back and forth on Twitter with my best friend, Brendan. Now, Brendan and I have been best friends since preschool, since four years old, he's my next door neighbor, and Brendan also happened to be black. So Brendan and I were going back and forth on Twitter one day, and this is when Twitter was like the group chat, you know what I mean? You were just saying crazy shit there, because it was just y'all. You didn't think anybody was gonna care eight years later. So we were going back and forth on Twitter, just roasting each other, right? He would say something, I would say something, he would say something, I would say something. And then he said some shit that really had me fucked up. Because when, uh, when I was 15, I also had Ohio teeth. Like, I had a big gap in the middle, I had little gaps on the side. My teeth were fucked up. And Brendan said some shit like, you're the only person I know who can eat food without opening their mouth. <laughs> and... 15-year-old me was shook. I was like, God damn, that's, you know, that's a finisher right there. <laughs> so the roast battle was clearly over, so I conceded, and I had responded back with a very famous Chief Keef lyric at the time from the song Don't Like. So the conversation went, you're the only person I know who can eat food without opening their mouth. And I responded, fuck, mm, that's that shit I don't like. Now... If you're familiar with the song, 
you would know I had tweeted the N word in the song lyrics to my friend. And this was incredibly wrong. This was ignorant, naive, and stupid. I, I wish I had never done it. And when this resurfaced, people lost their fucking mind. I'm sorry. White people <laughs> lost their fucking mind. They couldn't believe it. They thought I had just gotten away with being racist for eight years. They were like, what? You can't say that. You're not black. You're not in the car by yourself. <laughs> Like, they thought I had just found a loophole in racism and squeaked through the cracks. And black people couldn't believe that I knew who Chief Keef was. That was the biggest uproar amongst the black community. They were like, he fucks with Sosa? I had no idea. It was instant outrage amongst the whites, okay? And this was such an uncomfortable situation because white people love to be offended for other people. It's our favorite extracurricular activity to be like, oh, oh, did you, did you, did you see? They want you to be upset about stuff you didn't, you weren't even initial, initially upset about. White people are like PC gladiators. Just, are you not outraged? <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> now I am. And again, this is a very tough position to be put in because white people have ruined every excuse in the book to get out of being called racist. They ruined all of them. And fortunately, but unfortunately, I fit a massive cliche. If you or anybody watching were to take the slightest glimpse into my life, you wouldn't have to look far at all. You would see that all of my friends are black. All of them. That's one. That's, there, there's others, I swear. <laughs> All of them are black. I have one white friend, and he's Russian. His name is Vladislav. And I, don't, I don't know how much y'all know about Russians, but they're the black people of white people, okay? They're so dope. So, <laughs> to my naivety, I'm trying to state my case to these strangers online who don't know who I am or know anything about me because from my perspective I'm like no like what, what are you talking about I, I'm not racist if you look at the people who I hold closest in my life the people who mean more to me than my actual blood family the people I love most and would probably fucking die for you would see that they're black like what I did was obviously stupid and wrong but I didn't mean anything malicious by it I would never in my fucking life meet anybody any hate or harm based on the color of their skin. That's outrageous to me. And the most frustrating thing about the entire experience and arguing with these people online was that there's still people who don't believe me. There's people right now, I'm sure, watching being like, this is just another white dude trying to get out of another sticky situation. <laughs> and I understand that. But at the same time, I also don't have to convince you of a single fucking thing. I, I know who I am. I know I'm not racist. I know how many times I've jacked off to Queen Latifah's beauty shop. <laughs> y'all sleep it? Oh, y'all sleeping, man. That shit is a classic. They so goddamn fine in that movie. Oh, Whew. So, this is when the conversation got really interesting because the problem shifted subjects. The issue started with a stupid mistake I made when I was 15 years old, and it shifted to white people now being uncomfortable with my comfortability with black people. Like, they were, they were very uncomfortable with it. They were saying outrageous shit. They would be like, uh, oh, I bet you hang out with so many black people so that you can justify saying racist shit like that. For real? <laughs> That's how you think racism and discrimination works? All right, bet. So if I hate gay people, I'm out here sucking so much dick <laughs> just so I can be like, ugh, these homos are disgusting. Am I right? I'm not. Oh my God. That's not how racism and discrimination works. I wouldn't put myself in that situation, but they kept going. They got more and more ignorant. They're like, oh, well, why do you hang out with so many black people then, huh? What do you want to be black? Fucking... A little bit, a little bit. It's so much cooler some of the time, okay? 
every white person wishes they were black a little bit. Any white person who says they don't is a fucking liar or a cop, okay? Do not believe that for even a second, okay? But the silver lining of all of this is it made me do so much reflecting. Like, things that I had never had to put any thought into because they were such first nature to me, I actually thought about. Like, I had never thought about why all of my friends are black. I had never thought about why I'm so comfortable with black people or why I appreciate black people so much. So I did a lot of self-reflecting on it and the conclusion I came to is that nobody goes through more shit and still enjoys life to the fullest more than black people. Nobody. It's so impressive to me. And it's such a beautiful way to live your life because everybody's going to go through shit, but not everybody can bounce back and still enjoy shit to the fullest. And I think it's an absolutely incredible way to live. This is gonna seem so dramatic, but I need you guys to take it into consideration. Do you have any idea what it takes to have this country literally built on your fucking back to this day still have to fight to be treated like a decent human being and still have time to write a better version of the happy birthday song? <laughs> have y'all heard it? That shit's incredible. They got a Drake verse on there. It's incredible. Step your shit up, white people. You had such a head start. It's absolutely amazing. At its simplest form, it just comes down to common interest and common opinion. The people who you have in common, interest and opinion, those are the people you surround yourself with. Those are your real friends, those are your real family. The world should not be split into like, oh, white people do this, black people do this. If you're trying to do something another culture does, you're trying to do something that you're not. Like that, that divides us, that does not bring us together. And it doesn't even need to be so cut and dry. It goes through all aspects of life. Comedy is like that. I'm supposed to come up here, say some relatable shit that y'all probably kind of already thought about. We make it funny, now we have that bond together, right? But there's still that judgment until we have that bond. Like every time I walk on stage, every dude watching is like, mm -mm. absolutely not. I ain't got nothing in common with this dude. He got bangs. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna think he's funny. But as soon as I come up here and say some relatable shit that we can agree on, like, who in here like big titties? All those dudes are like, well, let's give him a chance. You see, see what these titties are talking about. Cause we're not that fucking different, man. Stop dividing people just because you're uneducated or inexperienced, okay? That's why you're uncomfortable. That's why you come across as so fucking corny, and that's why you're not invited to the cookout. <laughs> I'll bring the potato salad. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, I'll, 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 I'll bring chairs, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, my name is Matt Reif. Thank you so much, you guys. You guys are fantastic. Get home safe, please.